Hey there, hi there, ho there, it's me, Bear Gen X GM. We are live. We've got Mr. Cody, Mr. Legion, Mr. Geek, Mr. of the OSR, Mr. Ramadan, so his camera's not on right now, and Mr. Hungar. How y'all doing, boys? So then I told him that would cost 20 bucks. Oh, shit, we're live. Ah, you gotta do that joke <laughs> when we go live. Have you not paid attention to how I normally do that joke, man? Come on. <laughs> And that's what I told him. Same as in town. Um, what about same as in town? Okay, so basically, we are doing our monthly Palladium Fantasy game, uh, the uh, Codex Albana, where uh, these lovely heroes are on a quest. Well, Ramadan got them, um, and uh, they're heading into the wilds of Escane to uh, fulfill the Pendrick cycle. But before we do that, who wants to summarize the campaign thus far for us? Who wants to give us previously on Codex Alabama? There may be a gift in it for someone if they do it. So anyway, as you all probably know, you watch Philip, the star of the game, you know, who went and saved everybody from the freaking beastman. It was Philip. Scared them all away with my staff of power. And wonder. I mean, and then, of course, our brave archer hid in the kitchen. <laughs> our our knightly fighters, they're like, you know what? If he's going to do it, I'm going to do it. The beast band got really mad at us, the one that's on our side, because he's trying to fight them all off. And we're like, eh, yeah, nah, we're not running. Three your plans, buddy. So we, as a party, pretty much made a complete shit show out of somebody's honorable sacrifice. Okay. That was like the last half hour of the last session. Anybody want to tell me what happened the rest of the session? We hid. We got lost. We got rained on. Uh, uh, I remember we were, we were followed. We were followed by the executioners. Oh, I forget the name of them. Um, the Estrati. The Estrati. Got, we got uh, we were followed. Then we hid. We hid from them. And then we ran into some beastmen, both in the woods, and that was not cool. And then out at the uh, uh, the waypoint, whatever. Uh, the Brass Boar in Roadhouse. The, the, good name. <laughs> uh, Polly, uh, Polly was never seen until the end. <laughs> yes, her husband, Basil Boar's head, and his lovely wife, Polly. Uh, and I stayed, there, I stayed there to defend and protect them because you all a bunch of weirdos go and fight monster men out there and yeah that wasn't going to happen so we Sir Gerard's armor rusted a bit he got a squire he got a squire oh, oh that's right squire, he got this kid yes. I forgot about that I, I should have remembered that yes what else there was another big thing that happened at the end there I got drunk as shit that, that oh didn't. there was a big honor duel between the uh Beastman champion and Sir Gerard. Was it Sir Gerard? No, no, no. Who? Uh, no, it was your Beastman who tried to get you all to Right, leave. right, right, right. And then, and then uh, Gerhard stepped in. That was the best, uh, man. Gerhard standing there. And how long did Malachi pause before he decided what he was going to do? Like, it was so funny. Right. You could almost see the smoke coming out of his ears. It was awesome. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And then um, your little. Uh, Rover girl sacrificed a part of her life force to save yeah. your uh, your beast friend. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But it was kind of funny because it's raining, it's night, you're all standing out there with your swords drawn and all that. And meanwhile, in the kitchen, a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Watching over the sleeping innkeeper and his wife that Laurel and Laurelin, uh put to sleep. So in the end, you guys managed to save the day, which was a good thing. I saved the day. Okay. Philip saved the day, scaring off the beastmen with his staff of power. Bless Drunk you, breath, uh, John. Bless you. Bless you, you geek, with your sneezes. And the rest of you are all going to hell because you didn't say bless you. Just so you know, enjoy that. Uh, anyway, get some dice. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to hell for many other reasons. The bless yous aren't saving me. That's yeah. just the way it is. Anywho. Um, <laughs> it's gonna be one of those days with Iman today, isn't it? But at least he can't, doesn't have to pause his camera. Let's see if we can get him back in here. Nope, 
Let's try again. Yep, there we go. Iman, you doing okay? Oh buddy? dear. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Just uh, clearing up after you know Ramadan meal and stuff. And okay, you can, you, you can just usual. do your shit and don't worry about it. We'll jump in when you're free. Uh, okay, so basically, you guys went back to the uh, the boar's head, uh, the brass boar, the brass boar uh, roadhouse, and spent the night there, riding out the storm and all that until the morning came. Um, the um, rover uh, brewed a lovely uh, tea for you all to sleep. And if anyone drank it, let me know. If you didn't, well, too bad. So did anybody drink the tea that she brewed? I'll okay. Drink. Yeah. If you drank the tea, you got back nine SDC and or hit points, depending whichever one you had lost. I'm assuming I didn't have a chance to drink any tea because I'm still... Um, pretty much flat out, and well, they poured some down your throat. How about that? Go on then, go on then. <laughs> and eventually, uh, the morning came. Oh yes, and sorry for the people viewing. You can buy them re rolls, or you can buy them bad things for super chats, but only in the um, uh, Society of Society. Role Players game uh, channel. If you do it in the other channels, well, you're just being nice and helping them all out. But if you want to buy them stuff for the game. Come on over to this channel and do a super chat. Uh, now, you guys go through the night. It storms. It rains. It's a. It's it's as if the very fury of heaven itself is letting you know that it is pissed about something. But when you wake up in the morning um, to a a rather um, pleasant Basil Boarhead, who's just like, "Good morning, yes, hello, good morning, welcome, all of you, yes, thank you, you're such brave heroes." Polly and I have made a wonderful breakfast for you all. It's fantastic. I think you'll be very happy. We have eggs and bacon and fresh baked bread. It's beautiful. The windows are open, and you can smell not only the really amazing food that's being cooked, but you can smell that day after a cleansing storm smell you get in the country where everything just has like a <laughs> pressure. And nice can you let me finish my fucking narration, Hungar? Do you mind terribly, buddy? Please, if I get the well, narration out of my mouth before you do that, please. I'm, begging I'm just role playing, man. Jeez. Yeah, I know, but I'm also narrating, and you're cutting me off. Please, I'm begging you. With a million thousand sons of love. Anyway, it's a nice morning. Final story on that. All right, you guys are all awake. Food has been laid out for you. What are you doing? Hunger's <laughs> vomiting. <laughs> Apparently. Well, so I'm hungry. I'm going to go find the food. Corner vomiting. So the food's being laid out on the table for you guys. It's all there. There's fresh yeah. tea. Uh, there's lots of food, lots of you to eat. Uh, the innkeeper's very pleased. He's very happy that you protected his inn last night. He's very excited about all that. He thinks it's wonderful. Uh, Polly gives an extra scoop of cream for you, Ethan, because you protected her all night, and that was a great thing in her mind. So. Huh? The chubby little blonde innkeeper's wife is uh, kind of smiling a little girlishly at you as she she puts an extra dollop of cream on your uh, what is this thing crumpet you know that type of thing in the morning, but otherwise you're all sitting around the table. And except for Philip, who's vomiting out the back door. I haven't met the innkeeper yet because no. I was unconscious when all that was happening. Yeah. Uh, who who is that buffoon? Why is he? behaving so strong. I mean, his wife is clearly an excellent cook. But You should try this. Yeah, I, I, I fully intend to. I fully intend to. Um, oh, just a little because it hurts still. It, 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 it really hurts. So just a little for me, but this... Who is that buffoon? Oh, that's the innkeeper. Um, yeah. He's a pleasant fellow. I gather his wife does all the work around here because he couldn't run, a th run this place. Oh, he's a most gracious host. Don't be so crude. Just enjoy your breakfast. Stop being so mopey. Uh, I, I am sorry. I woke up in some pain this morning. My, uh, I think I might have done something to my ribs. I stagger over to the table, saying, "I am never going to drink again." You cut out. You cut out, sir. I said, "I stagger to the table, saying, I am never drinking again.'" 
Right. So, uh, uh, your squire puts a plate of food in front of you, uh, Sir Gerard. And uh, Esmeray actually brings you a plate of food, uh, Philip. And she's like, she taps your hand. She's like, you should eat. You'll feel better. I try. Hunger around. Uh, okay. my... Hello. Can you hear me now? Yeah, you just keep cutting out like halfway through a sentence. I, I pick up my food. Okay. Yeah, I'll be picking up mine as well. Well, once you take a bite of it, it's actually quite good, and uh, you feel a lot better after you have some food in your system. It helps you all feel a little bit better. Even you, <clears> Mr. <throat> almost died in the middle of the night in the woods, uh, Devere, with that lovely chest wound and your armor with damage. Yes. Um, yes. So eventually, uh, the innkeeper wanders over and is like, will you be staying longer than just today, or will, will this be it, and we'll be not seeing you again? He looks well, cool. I'm sure you'll see us again sometime in the future, but we have to be setting off. We're on an important mission to Escane. Escane? Yes. Why Why would you go into Escane? Well, sir, yeah. that I'm not really sure of, but we will find out <laughs> when we get there. My God, man. I, I, I mean, I, I'm not one to tell you your business, sir. You're clearly honorable gentlemen of great breeding and culture, but Escane right. is death. And why is that, sir? I'm not familiar with this. I don't want to tell that. Warlords, beastmen, witches, monsters, those evil sorceresses at Ambria. It's, it's not a place for civilized people. And you, and he looks right at Devere, and, and you, sir, are clearly a civilized gentleman. I am. More civilized than you, I can tell you. I can tell you that. Have I, have I done some great offense to you, sir? I apologize. I apologize. My God, Polly, get me something for the gentleman. I apologize, sir. I meant no insult to you at all, sir. No insult taken. I look over at the beer and I'm like, see, he told you your armor wasn't going to last. <sighs> When we find an accomplished smith and I get the uh, necessary funds, we get paid. I will get it uh, at some point, hopefully. Um, I will I will get it looked at, but uh, I can see nothing wrong with it. It was made by a most excellent smith in Palabria. That shopkeeper who taught who span all that yarn he was just trying to get extra money out of me that's all it is there's nothing wrong with my armor not at all that's just I, except for I, the I, big I, hole in the side uh, yeah 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 i'm like oh it's, it's fine it's fine it's fine well he's rambling over there i'm gonna go to uh, laurelin and just kind of tug on his what is it a thing why am why am i here I don't want to go meet warlords. You're here because destiny has led you here. I got nothing. Now finish your breakfast. You're going to need it. We've got a long journey ahead of us. Not to interrupt you, gentle lords, and not to at all presume your business, but you've said you're going into Escane, and I, I do notice that you've brought horses with you. Are you planning on taking the horses into Escane? Yes. Is that a problem? Well, well <laughs> is it a problem? <laughs> the, 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 the salt road is uh, non-existent uh, once you cross the threshold. It's fallen into disrepair uh, at best you'll find maybe animal trails and woodcutters trails it would be a very difficult going for horses dangerous even and there are things in this game that crave man flesh and horse flesh well we will take uh, note of that what do you think sir gerard you are the um, master of the horses after all I think our horses are coming with us. Uh, they will 
not be served as horse steaks in this inn once we leave them behind. Oh, no, 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 out. no, no. We have a lovely livery out back. We could you stay had horse steaks? You. They're good. <laughs> My horse is a pure thoroughbred. It is not, I repeat, not for consumption. Well, not I initially. can assure you, lords, we would happily stable your horses for you and treat them better than our own. His horse is well bred, just like his armor is well made. Yes, 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 yes. Correct, Philip. Correct. It is well made. I think. As Marie leans over to you, uh, Laurelyn, and she's just like, we have to go. The time is now. We have people to meet. Places. To Very meet. well. Well, it's been a pleasure, sir. I reach out my hand to the innkeeper. Oh, that was her, absolutely. As he shakes your hand. Hopefully we will see you in the not so distant future. I'm sure we'll see you on the journey back. Well, at least some of us. Paulie and I have taken the, 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 the privilege of gathering some foodstuffs for you to help you on your journey. It is the least we can do for you saving us from those horrible, horrible beast men last night. Well, it is much appreciated, and um, I'm sure my compatriots here appreciate it as well. So, Gerard, I suppose we've made a decision on the horses. I intend to ride. Very Before well, we'll go, bring the horses um, with us. I must uh, commend uh, Mistress Polly on her excellent service. And um, I do worry, though. A poor choice of husband. Yes, I am a horrible person. It's true, sir. Absolutely. I should be flogged. I, you are a fine and noble knight, and I am but a peasant, sir. Correct. Yes, sir. He, he scrapes and bows whenever you look at him. You know, he doesn't make eye contact, you know. After the dressing down that I got um, from my commander the previous day, this is making me feel so much better. <laughs> Yeah, I, I chuckle to myself. Come on, then, fellows. Let us uh, just head on our way. Bye. Listen, Molly, thank you for yes. the hospitality. So while she's in the kitchen, but she's like, boy, be well. And then she runs out to a thane and she hands you a kerchief bundle tied off and goes, that's just for you, love. Don't let the others have any. That's just for you. Thank you very much. You're so Such nice. A good thank boy. you. I wish I had a daughter for you. She's Me too. And they, they stand there waving goodbye to you. When you go outside, um, you see your beast friend sitting, just squatted, watching, waiting. Uh, bless you if you just sneezed. I don't know what happened there. It was weird. Um, you guys get all your horses and gear together. And like I said, they've given you a couple of days worth of, you know, non-perishable foods, like some cheese, some dried meat, some bread, some nuts, seeds, things like that. And with that, you start heading sort of north, 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 northwesterly into a skein along the salt road. Right, right before we get over any crest or out of sight or whatever, I turn around one last time and just. Oh, they're still there waving, and like she's she's beaming, and he looks like he was like when you turned, he was like, hey, you know, type of thing, because you know he's just happy you're gone. Um, but you start heading northwest. It takes about most of the morning following the salt road. You're pretty sure you're still in the kingdom of Davin at this point in time because, you know, things look fairly well maintained and what have you. The, the, the mile markers are still painted and things like that. And then the salt roads, the, like this is like the equivalent of old Roman roads, right? But with like brickwork, like cobble work, um, roadstones. And it's starting to get a little not so great. And, you know, gaps in the brickwork from where plant life has grown up and things like that. And all the while, you can see the looming forest ahead of you getting closer and closer and closer as you're heading towards it. And in the distance, the, the forested mountains that make up most of what is the territory of Escane. Uh, Escane is essentially a giant valley, is the best way to describe it. And then eventually, you guys all come to a stop as you get to that one last mile marker that's really run down. 
The cobbles are almost completely gone and the road is turned to dirt with the occasional stone from the old salt road still there. And you're looking down into this massive forested valley and you realize once you pass this stone, you will be entering the kingdom of Escane, which has not been a kingdom for centuries. It was the, the last of the... Um, the Aglish High Kingdoms in the day. Uh, it is it is the old world of Albana. It is pre-civilization almost. Like it's 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 you're going into a dark, dark place. And it is overgrown. You can smell the pollen in the air and the as the sun's been drying off the rainstorm from the last night, as the pollen's in the air, you can hear animals everywhere. Uh, you can see eagles in the sky, you know, circling and what have you. And it's it's a very rugged world ahead of you. You continue, I assume. With Laurelin leading the way, I would assume, and your beast man running off and coming back and running yeah. off and coming back, scouting ahead for you. He wasn't kidding for the horses. Within an hour, you've slowed to an almost a crawl with the horses trying to pick their way through the rocky, broken road and stuff like that. And then you get to parts where, like, the road has been washed out and there's just like a little like maybe two three foot gully and things like that and it's really really slow going um as you continue the day is getting darker it's still spring so the night comes faster than you like the afternoon is getting longer and darker and whatever good spirits you had leaving the the brass boar have started to fade as the gloom and the the ominous feeling uh, holy shit, Squirrel Hermit. All right, guys. Well, Squirrel Hermit has given you the most expensive re-roll in history for each of you. So there you go. You each get one re-roll for this game. Thank you, Squirrel. You're I'm thank you. marking them down. And I also saw your new haircut and lack of beard, and I got to say, it scared the living shit out of me, Squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good look. Um, anyway, like I said, it's starting to get a little bit on edge. And uh, you realize you're going to have to find a campsite soon because you can't keep going. And if you go in the dark, you're going to have broken horse legs or worse, you know. This, my friends, is what comes from a place where tradition is forgotten, where structure is ignored, where past... Uh, Past experiences are put to one side and the history is not learned from. This is what this is a fallen kingdom. So most of you all know from growing up on Albana the history and why this happened, and it was a Palabrian Hi, Devere. Rebellion that led to the death of the king of Escane and his sons. And that's why the, the Three Sisters Battlefield Tournament you started at is, is held every year at the site of their death. And the, subs the subsequent uh, succession war that happened in Escane between the warlords is what plunged it into darkness and chaos all those centuries ago. So, yeah. Make of that what you will that the Palabrians talking about the fall of society when his people were the ones that technically everybody in the island blames for it. But hey... You what you may have heard about uh, the, what happened to this kingdom is probably not the truth. In fact, it, it will not be. Well, started it. history is always told from the perspective of the victors, is it not? But in the meantime, we must find a suitable campsite, I think. I can go look around for a little bit. I'd like to just get away. That'd be well. Do that. Okay. So how, go how far? Yeah. How far can I go? I'm, I'm guessing maybe 100, 200 yards at most before. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, you're going to like, it's, it's like, think about Hungar probably have a good perspective on this. Think about the deepest, darkest regions of the Appalachians. Yeah. I mean, I've right? been to the Black that's, Forest. I get it. Yeah. That's kind of where you are. Like, you're in like, you know, old growth, not a lot of civilization. If there is any forest, you know what I mean? You're following animal trails for the most part. Which is why I don't want to go any more than 200 max uh, yards uh, away, but I just find a, a soft area. If you want me to make a wilderness survival roll, I will. I would. Uh, in, I would in... Like you to. Okay, it's so that I can just find somewhere that we could sleep the night that isn't going to... Too much of it. And of course, I didn't have percent all dice ready because I'm an idiot. <gasps> you right. bastard. 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 I got a 36 in my what is it, wilderness five. Oh, my wilderness five is 30. 
Okay. So basically you're looking around, you're looking around. You do have a reroll if you want to spend it on that. It's up to you. Okay. So you're looking around, you're looking around, and you're sort of like getting a little frustrated. Then you come across this area that's like a... You know those weird sort of outcroppings of rock you'll get from the side of a hill, mm -hmm. you know, where it's just like bare rock with moss growing on it? You get one of those, and you almost like do a double take. Because <laughs> sitting on the top of it is a tumbled over head of a statue of some thing, some some noble, some knight, some something. It's been weather-worn. It's covered in moss with flowers starting to sprout in the spring out of it and stuff like that. How high up? Oh, that's probably about... 10 15 feet up the rock to go up to where the head is okay. but right underneath this crowd carving rock there's a nice flat surface with the the edge falling off into the woods but basically it's a fairly defensible position from what you can see and you can hear trickling water nearby somewhere Ooh. okay uh, I'll, I'll take about another 50 before it gets too dark i'll take another maybe 15 minutes or so just to kind of look around a little more without any sort of climbing or yeah, yeah. Putting Nothing myself like in a bad you. situation, and then I'll start heading back in the direction. Hopefully, I find him. Okay. Well, and you, you turn around to head back. You see the beast guy sitting squatted on the path waiting for you. He scares me. I'm going to give him a wide berth. Well, he just stays ahead of you, leading you back to the others. And eventually, you guys see the two of them come. They've been gone for about a half an hour or so. Did you find anything? I found a statue of a head. But did you find a suitable campsite? I think so. You think so, or you <clears throat> know so? I'll stay there. Here, let me show you. Come on, come on. Well, I'm if you'll cool. stay there, for the horses. Good for us, yeah. What was that, uh, Sir Gerald? Uh, is, is it a comfortable campsite with suitable grazing for the horses? Well, you can come take a look. I said <laughs> I'd sleep there. I, I don't have a horse. I'm not worried about the horses. All right, so he leads you to this site he found. Uh, it, again, it's a it's animal trails you're walking on, so the horses are having a bit of a rough time. Go over there ahead. And then eventually he brings you to this place, which at glance, serviceable, defensible. Um, bless you again, John. Uh, no real grazing area for the um, for the horses. But you do have feed bags and stuff like that, so you can take care of them if you need to. And you know, you're, you're gonna you're eventually gonna have to replenish that feed clearly because you know you don't have an unlimited supply. But you can uh, you can make the most of it. I think this will do. Good job, Afain. Well, I, I heard water. I heard. I'll go see if I can find the water. I thought I heard some trickling of a stream or something around here. Yeah, so I'm gonna go have a look up there. I just start gonna... watering up the uh, side of the hill. I want to go look at this statue. Okay. I'm going to try to start a fire. You're muted, John. Sorry, go ahead, Hungar. I'm going to try to start a fire. Okay, give me a wilderness check, please. Because, again, it rained last night, so it's going to be a little bit harder than usual, but you might be able to pull it off. 70, not a chance. No, so he, you're, you're trying as hard as you can, and then uh, uh, Perrin, the, the squire, sits down, and he starts lending you a hand. The two of you are having a real tough time, but that's what you guys are doing for now. Uh, Devere, Perrin, you want I to have something... Thing? I have something a little more important for you, Perrin. Leave, uh, leave the monk to his to his job. We should leave. We uh, uh, take my water skin. Catch up with Ethane, please, and uh, uh, we we need some fresh water. We and he takes the water skin and he goes running off the direction Ethane went. Uh, Bakht and uh, Ishmitar, are you guys doing anything, or are you just baking camp and setting up? Yeah, gonna get everything set up for us. Okay, Ishmitar. Yes, sir. What are you doing? Yes, I will set up. I will okay, so, up camp. So Bach and Ishmatar are setting up the camp. Uh, Philip's trying to start a fire. Devere is supervising. <laughs> Thane has run off to find water with a, a squire chasing after him. And Lorelan is trying to find his way up the side of this hill. Give me a, a wilderness check, Cody. All right, before I set off up the trail, I'm going to cast Globe of Daylight. So I have oh, some still light. daylight. It's still daylight. <laughs> oh, okay. If it's still yeah. daylight, I thought it was dark. No, no, no. It's getting long in the afternoon, but the sun hasn't gone down yet. Gotcha. Uh, what do you want me to do? Wilderness. Wilderness. Yep. Yeah. Um. How about um navigation? That'll work. I failed. 
Okay, so you sort of are trying to find your way. You, you wander around the side of the hill, and then you notice, like, at first it's like you stub your toe on it, like, uh, and then you look down, and you notice in the, the moss and the grass, there's actually cut stairs leading up the side of the hill. Hmm. But they've been going over. Does it look like it's leading up in the direction of that statue? With that roll, sure. Yeah, it looks like the best way up. Everything else is pretty... Uh, Bad right. going, so I'm gonna go upstairs. Cool, a thing. Give me a wilderness check to find some water, buddy. Yeah. Okay. What? 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 what you were gonna say something? What was it? Well, first of all, do I notice a uh, little kid running up to me? Not or yet. Not? Okay. Not yet. Um, I got something. But, uh, sixty-four. So you're sort of like trying to follow the sound of water, and then you hear the the you turn and you see the little running up to you with the two water skins and you know maybe he grabbed box and ishmatars as well so he's got like four water skins as he's running up and he's like you know looks like a little pack animal uh and he's like uh, monsieur monsieur uh the chevalier let me come with you fill the water well we got to find the water first hey can you get me two sticks that look like l's two sticks look like l's yeah, here i'll hold uh, the water skins for you uh, okay okay and he and he starts looking around he comes back with two sticks that might do what you need them to do. Excellent, excellent, excellent. I need to hold them out in front of you. Okay. And when they cross, that's where the water is. And I'm rolling dousing. Okay, make a roll. <laughs> no chance. Ha! 13! Bam! Oh, yeah, 25. Okay. <laughs> and it was low. <laughs> yeah, wait, no. Yeah! <laughs> so uh, <laughs> you guys walk around sort of in a, in a circle, sort of following the... And then eventually they cross... And you sort of get down on your hands and knees and you start digging through the moss and then your fingers are getting wet and you realize, oh, there's an underground little stream right here and it's pretty close to the surface. It takes about five, 10 minutes of digging with your hands to sort of break the dirt back. There's raw stone underneath this as you realize this is not good crop growing area for sure, first of all. And there's water pouring underneath along the stone. So it'll take a while, but you can definitely fill those uh, water skins from here. I pat him on the head. You're a natural. And uh, uh, okay. we'll... we'll, we'll... We'll fill up the water skins. Hey, bon, hey, bon, merci. And you guys start spending time filling up the water skins. I can't believe that worked. <laughs> Lorelon, <laughs> you keep going up the path. And it's it's now taking on sort of an angular sort of circle type, almost like a, a spiral sort of thing. And then eventually, after about 15 minutes of climbing these stairs, and it's not easy going. You Thankfully, you have your staff to steady you. Uh, you get to the top. And it's like a plateau, and you can see rocks, like remnants of wall, um, you know, some four or five feet tall, some a foot tall. And as you sort of look at the ground, you can see that there's definitely like flagstones and stuff underneath the moss and the, the stuff that's grown over it, poking through here and there. As you realize you're on some sort of lookout, maybe uh, something, but this is this is an old site. I'm going to start examining it. Um, either uh, would either lore, Albana, or archaeology help? Archaeology would certainly help. Yeah, I'm going to start examining it, walking around, uh, uh, looking for any kind of writing. Is there any walls, or is it just a... Like, like I a, said, there's a few like a three or four, like broken pieces of walls and stuff, but there's no writing on them. Okay, well, I'm going to look around for any other... Okay, go ahead and make a and figure out what this is. Uh, I pass. <laughs> I pass. Uh, okay, so you're basically looking around, looking around. You're sort of like getting lost in thought on all this place, and you don't know how much time has passed. At some point, the sun's definitely going down behind you, so you pop up your globe of light. Philip, you're still trying to work and get this thing going. It's been about an hour, and like you know, you get a little bit of smoking, and then it goes out, and a little bit of smoking, and it goes out. And as you sort of look up in frustration, you see up at the top of the hill behind this head, there's a faint glow coming through in the darkness. I point at the glow and I say, does anybody else see that? Athane, you're back by now with the uh, okay. the, the canteens. And the I rest of you look up and yeah, you can definitely see there's a faint glow coming from behind this statue head that's toppled over. Wow. I do, I, I... I do see it. What is that? Would I have any chance of recognizing who the statue might be? Of. 
What kind of skill do you think you could bring to the table on that one? History. You can give it a try. No. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, and that's the statue of my great, great, great grandfather, Guillaume de Vere. <laughs> yeah, that's what I. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, th I think I recognize that uh, that statue. Um, yes. Um, not no relation of mine, but uh, I believe he was a, a knight of this region by the name of Sir Hungar the Magnificent. I, I put away my um, flint stills like we're having coat camp tonight because fire's not as important as water, obviously, Sir Gerard. And then I start walking over toward the light. To where? Toward the glow that I see. Well, like I said, it's up top on top of this hill coming from behind the statue head, so you're going to have to find a way up there. Okay, I'm not going to walk all the way over there because I'm still hung over. And so I'm well, going to sit down and start eating some cheese and some beef jerky. Okay. The sun sets. You have no fire. It's a clear night. Oh. Good sized moon, so it's well lit where you are. Like you're, you're able to see the sky and the stars and all that kind of stuff. But it's still dark. Uh, I mean, uh, I mean, if you've been in the woods in the middle of the night, you know how dark it can get, uh, even with a clear sky. Um, you can hear animals and what have you. But uh, Laurelin is nowhere to be seen. He hasn't come back. And uh, uh, the beast man sort of comes into camp, looks, sort of looks at each and every one of you, and then goes, and then looks at the glow, and goes patting and starts climbing straight up the hill, like, you know, just scrambling up it. Up the rock face and he disappears over the head of the statue. Just sort of watch him as he goes. And then some badasses drive by on their motorcycles outside. <laughs> um, Laurelin, you're sort of studying. There's, there's, there's etchings that you're finding in various rocks, which are like almost like treat it like you know medieval graffiti people have you know carved their name and stuff and things like that and you're trying to sort of read it but it's been faded by you know years of weathering and you know, you're taking out your little dagger to sort of put moss out of it and all that and as you're sort of focusing on that you become aware someone's behind you i slowly uh staff at the ready uh spin around and rise to my feet Okay, you see the beast man sitting on sort of per perched, you know, like squatted on top of one of the, the taller rock walls. And he's just looking at you. And he looks at, points to the sky and then back to you. And then. Yes, quite right. Um, curiosity got the better of me, but we'll have to observe this sight in the morning. Hmm. You probably know your way back down uh, better than I do, so why don't you leave? Hmm. So he looks back the way he came, looks at you, and then just basically follows the path you came up and leads you back down the stairs and around. So about 10 minutes later, the beast man and Laurelin rejoin you at the camp. No fire. It's a chilly spring night. You're all going to have to bundle up. What's your plan for the evening, gentlemen? How are you getting through your night? You said, so it's clear night, so chances are it's not going to rain chances yeah this is uh gonna be somewhat comfy uh just on that stone area i'm gonna unroll my bedroll and uh i guess i'll keep my armor won't be on but i'll keep my clothes on if i have to put another set on i will just to stay warm and uh i'm gonna hide under the covers and see what polly gave me to eat okay um polly gave you uh honey cakes <gasps> awesome. i try I, I continue to work on trying to get a fire going don't grow it's, it's not a lot of freezing you're trying but it's just not happening everything's too wet to make a fire it's still too damp to burn i sit and i'm showing para how to uh keep uh weapons clean um teaching him sort of basic sword and dagger mm -hmm. maintenance sure Esmeralda, on the other hand, takes your tabard away from you and starts stitching up the, the cut in the side of it where it went through your armor. So she's sitting Thank quietly you. on a rock doing that. And eventually you're all going to get tired and go to sleep. Yeah. 
with a cold meal in your stomachs. Do you have a watch order you're going to set up for the night, or are you just going to rely on fate? I'll take first watch. Yeah, I'm happy to be one of the ones who stands watch for a while. Yeah. Okay, work out the order and tell me what it is, please. Uh, so we got Philip first. Oh, yeah, Sir Gerard's going uh, to bed. So I'll go second, then. I'll go uh, third. Yeah. Uh, how, mu- how much, how many watches do we really need for everybody to get ample rest? Probably four, realistically. Two hours each. Okay, uh, and then a- after everybody's raising their hands and volunteering to take watches, I'm like, and a fame will take the last watch. And good night to you all. <laughs> and I wrap up my cloak and <laughs> after like nibbling on some of the leftovers from the inn. What? <laughs> You're on last, last watch. watch. Last watch? Okay. Yep. So, Whoever, wake me up. So it's Philip. Oh, well. Bach. Ishmatar Ethane, that's your order. Did I get it right? No, yeah. I was second. Box You're third. Second. Oh, All yeah. right, so box third. Okay, so Philip, Ishmatar, Bach, none of thing. Okay. Yes. Philip, nothing happens. It's quiet. I mean, other than the animals and what have you, and uh, the beast man's just sitting there looking at you, and then every now and then looking out into the woods, and then looking back at you because he's bored, and then looking back out into the woods, and he runs off into the woods at one point. And then he comes back with a dead rabbit and sits down and just helps himself to a dead rabbit. And while he's sort of eating, he just sort of looks at you at one point and just kind of holds out the bloody rabbit like, you want a piece type thing? Like, <laughs> No, thank you. And he just goes back to eating his catch. Um, eventually, it's time for you to get some sleep and you wake up Ishmatar. I wake up Ishmatar. And you go get some sleep. So Ishmatar, it's... Um, how do I put this gently? This is way more bibbawacking than your character's ever done in his life. Like this is this is this is rough. This is rough. Yeah. Um, you're not used to all these sounds you're hearing in the woods, and uh, you know the beast man every now and then runs off into the woods, and then comes back a bit later. But you're not sure what's going on, but he seems very intent on something out there in the woods as he keeps running off, and then five six minutes later comes mm-hmm. back. But tennis there runs off again. And at some point, you start to feel your eyes getting really, really, really heavy. Like you can't stop yourself from falling asleep. And I'm going to ask you to make a saving throw versus magic, please. And this would be... Okay, what do I roll? Uh, So it's a d20 and you need to get a 16 or higher because it's a magic ritual. D20, okie dokie. I got a 14. So you... Oh, well. You're gently shaken awake. What? What? What's so happening? As you, as you start to talk, a hand goes like this, and you see Esmeray looking at you. And in the moonlight, you can notice something. Her hair now has one white streak in it, which was not there before. And she says, it's time. We have to go now. Come. Right this minute? Can we? You and I have to go now. It's time. Come. Well, you. So you, you, stand know up, you, see, you see, there's like almost like a tenderly mist has covered the area. Like, you know, like sort of like that, that, that mist that moves and almost has a snake like quality to it. You see, everybody in the camp is asleep, including the beast man who's just flat out on the ground. Is this um, yeah, your he's... work or somebody else's? They will be fine. They are protected. We have to go. We'll come back, but we have to go. Come. And she starts walking right off the edge of what would be the cliffside or where the, the land falls away, like where you know the, the rocks are behind you. That would be, and she just walks out onto the mist. I follow right behind her. So it's as if there's solid springy ground under you as you walk. And the mist gets thicker and thicker and thicker. And you're sort of like, you know, you can just sort of make out her shadow in front of you in the mist as you keep following. There's a very wet kind of smell in the air, like a, like almost like a dampness, but sort of almost musty, mildewy type smell. 
Um, and then it's gone and it's replaced by a very minerally sort of scent. And there's a, there's a, there's a wind, like a gentle breeze, but it's not moving the mist at all. Other than the mist keeps undulating the way the mist undulates. And then you step out of the mist and you're standing on a mountain. Below you is a skein. You realize you're not where you were by a long shot. You're very far away. The moon is full above you, almost magically full. Like it's like it's unnatural. And you can see the entirety of Escane falling away beneath you, the middle, that giant lake that sits in the middle of it and all that. And in the middle of the island, in the middle of the lake, you can see an island. And even though you shouldn't be able to at this distance, you can see that there is a temple or a, some sort of building on that island. And she's standing beside you and she just points and she goes, they're waiting for her. She goes, I'm making her French. She's not French. She's a gypsy. <clears throat> They're waiting for us there. That is where we have to go. That is our destination. And how far... I realize that this is probably not um, completely reality, so how far is this destination? Many, many, many days. And what awaits us there? It's Ambria. Ambria awaits us there. The witches of Ambria want to talk to us. Witches? Would I know anything about these witches? Well, I want you to check. Do you have lore? Do you have a lore skill? I do. Go ahead uh, and make a roll. All right. And I'll give you a plus 10% bonus on that because of your magic background. I failed. Okay. So you're like, in the back of your head somewhere... It, it's it's scratching like you know the answer, but everything is so surreal and weird around you right now. You're having a really hard time trying to sort of piece it all together, and it's it's just overwhelming to you. I know something about these witches. I've heard that before. And, uh... and as you say that, you sort of sit up in your blankets, and Ishmatar, you sort of drozed off, and you're woken up by him sitting up going, I know something of these witches. And then he's looking around, and you can see Laurelin sort of looking odd. And you're like, you know, like, I'm awake, I'm awake. The mist is, there's no mist. Everybody's sleeping. Esmeray's sleeping. And Ishmatar is staring right at you, Laurelin. I get up from where I was resting now. I'm restless and got all this stuff buzzing in my head. And I go over to Ishmatar and uh, put my hand on his shoulder. I'm sit and get some, get some rest. I'll take your watch from here. What was that you just exclaimed about witches? <laughs> Don't worry about did, it right did, now. Did I hear myself? Did I hear that correctly? Or, I mean, I wasn't I wasn't sleeping at all. It, it was you. You said something. <laughs> we'll talk about it later. I have many things to think about. Get some rest. You sure you're okay? I'm fine. Okay. As long as you're sure, I will depart. Thank you. So uh, you, uh, a lot on your mind, you crawl into your bed, your bedroll to get some sleep, Ishmatar, but surprisingly you zonk right out and uh, sleep takes you. For you, Laurelin, your mind is on fire as you're trying to run your head through things and trying to put stuff together and trying to remember everything that you came up with. You have a reroll available to you. Would you like to use the reroll for your lore? Yeah, I'll do that. Okay, you still get the plus 10%. Passed. Okay. So you're sitting there, you think it, it, it comes to you almost like a, a flash of light in your mind. The High King of Eskane had made a deal with the, well, what they would have called the priestesses of uh, Ambria. And Ambria is this, 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 I don't know what you would call it, a nunnery, a, an abbot, uh, an abbey that sits on this island in the middle of the King's Lake. Now, the King's Lake is well known because at the far end of the King's Lake, where it empties out into the sea, there's a reversing waterfall. So basically, the tides are so strong, um, when the tide comes in, the lake fills up to about three and a half, maybe four feet of depth, and then it goes out, and it, it's just a mud flat. And then the tide comes back in, fills up, and that happens four times a day, right? Boom, 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 boom. 
Uh, and it's everyone in magic, sort of like when you think about it, it's like, yeah, the witches of Ambria were like the ones who predicted the, the they, they'd given a prediction to the high king not to go to this battle. He was going to die and lose his kingdom. He didn't listen and off he went. But the thing is, there is not a single Pendrick cycle you can think of that includes the witches of Ambria. Not one. So that's mm. a weird thing. Because this is breaking the pattern that you've studied. And as you're sort of doing that, you feel the, the sort of the light of dawn coming over the mountains as you realize you've been sitting here thinking and ruminating for hours. And somewhere in the distance, you can hear a cock crow as you realize you've literally let everybody sleep through the night as you've been sitting here. Um, and you see the beast guy just sitting there watching you. Like he looks like he's fascinated by you because, you know, he's been clearly staring at you for a while, but morning is upon you guys. And it's time to decide if you're going to wake them up or let them sleep or what you're going to do. <coughs> I let them sleep for maybe half an hour later than really what they should. And then I start gently nudging them awake with my staff. Okay. Who are you waking up first? I wake up a fame. Okay. A fame. Mm, watch time already. Uh, don't worry about the watch. It's morning. Wake up the others and um, see if you can get some kind of breakfast ready. Well, that's why you brought me along. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you can have the squire help you, of course, so, as long as Sir Devere is fine with it. I'll uh, actually, Sir Devere would be who I go to first. Like, I'll wake him up. Hey, Sir Devere. Sir Devere. Uh. It's time uh, to get up. It's time to get up. Uh, so parents uh, sit up immediately, like, bing. I will, uh, I will, feed, I will feed the horses, uh, Chevalier. I will, I will make sure they are okay, yes? Thank you. Okay. Thank you, and he runs off to deal with the horses, and uh, Esmeray actually um, starts putting together a cold breakfast for everybody. I'll do Navari what it, next. What is it, Ethan? What is it, you wish well, it's time to get up is it i'm just walking away and going over to navari hey guy well is it morning your, already your back hurts you didn't sleep well there were rocks under your you know under your spine it, you feel like shit like you're not like impaired but it's like you're like oh god like it's not the, <laughs> the feather bed of your family type of thing you know i'm a bit stiff Oh. Don't tell oh. me that. I'm going over to Brock. Brock. I'm just uh, doing some stretches, trying to solve my back he, out. He scares me, so I'm tapping him on the feet. So, hey. Brock, you wake up. Um, so, yeah. one of the nice parts about being an Astrati is that you guys do not believe in comfort or creature mm -hmm. comforts or or softness. So, sleeping on the ground, eh, that's like sleeping on the crappy mats back that you used to sleep on on the hard, cold stones. Like, it's, you know, you're fine. You wake up yep. fine. To get yeah. up time. Yep. Gotta get up. Go about my more normal morning. Then uh, I'm gonna slowly walk over to Philip. Intentionally, I give him another thirty seconds to a minute to sleep. <laughs> and then uh, he's snoring away. He seems like he's in a deep. <laughs> okay, I'll do the feet thing with him too because who knows what he might do. Poke <laughs> him with an arrow. Philip. What? Hey, it's time to get up. I let you sleep a couple minutes longer. You are the best. <laughs> By the way, you still have five honey cakes left, uh, Ethan. Shh! Don't tell no, them I'm that. You know, she gave she gave you six. You ate one. You have five left. Perfect. So yeah, I got I got everybody up, and um, I'm gonna if, if it's okay. I, if she's making food. The little girl's making food, so I'm gonna go do some practice. Not a lot of places you can practice around here. There's not a lot of open there's places. You can there's shoot. no tree. Oh, you can try like shooting between trees type thing and that. But I mean, like this is a thick forested area. Good, it's good for my accuracy. Yeah, fair enough. So you can do a little bit of practice. I'm not going to do like 50 shots. I just want to get one or two. Make sure the bowstring's still good. Make sure I can oh. still aim. That's all. It's... Okay. Well, eventually you all sit down to have your cold breakfast and uh, figure out what you're going to do for your day. I don't uh, sit down. I'm already like walking off as I see everybody's waking up and I look over at Sir Devere once I realize that he's a little bit more coherent and kind of yell over to him. 
Good morning, sir. I have to set off. I will be back within the hour. See that our party is ready to leave. I'll be back shortly. And I start walking back up the uh, mountain path. You're going back up to the uh, the top? Yeah. Okay. Are you sure it's safe to go alone? I'll be fine. Don't worry about me. Just get yourself something to eat. Get the horses ready. We'll be setting off within the hour. Very well, Lyle, well. and uh, make sure you are you, you make sure you are safe. I have a feeling that uh, you understand our predicament a little more than uh, the rest of us. Um, Para, how are the horses? Bon, uh, they, they, they are watered. They are fed. Uh, they they need to be walked soon. They are they are uh, restless. And Para, uh, you and the girl, make sure you get yourself some breakfast. We sort of, and he runs over and takes a bowl of whatever she's giving him, and he just sits down and eats it, you know. Ethane, you show uh, you show some promise. I, I, I saw you uh, practicing your archery um, to become a master of your craft. Practice is necessary. Training is worthwhile. That's what they used to tell me. I mean, the more you train... The luckier you become, as they say. Well, I need some of that. I'm going to go train some more. Do so. Be careful, so Thane. He's going to try to make you a squire. <laughs> Perrin I looks so shocked and yeah. horrified by that thought. <laughs> no! <laughs> Chevalier as a squire. Me. I am the squire. Absolutely. I have a very, very good squire who is he, serving excellently. He stops eating his food, runs over to your stuff, and starts rolling everything up and preparing, getting everything ready for travel, like he's being squire boy now. Para, finish, your breakfast. finish your breakfast. He's done. I can't eat. I'm full, full, full. And he just goes back to doing what he's doing. I'll grab he it and finish boots, it. And he starts polishing your boots, you know, and getting them all nice and polished for you. Like he's, he's um, proving his worth. Uh, the, the, the armor, you know, the bits that um, the fat one kept pointing out. Just uh, make sure we, they're nice and shiny. We, of course, of course. Oui, 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 oui. And he, you know, he's just busying himself with that stuff. Esmeralda just laughs under her breath and she just looks at you, Devere, and she's like, your stars. What a road you're going to go down. I look at Sir Gerard and I say, maybe he's not used to having men fight over him. I just... Um... <laughs> I'm mulling things over in my head. Uh, a lot of things happened yesterday that I'm trying to take in. I'm not used to this environment. I'm not used to the people I'm around. I'm not used to being hurt the way I'm hurt currently. Mm -hmm. um, and and it, it's still niggling in my mind about my armor. I mean, I'm, Perrin, my, my armor, is it is, is it okay? And the bit around my wound, um, do you think I need to get it repaired? It needs to be fixed. It needs to be fixed. Um, and he shows you where the links are broken in the chain. And he's like, I, I, I don't have uh, tools to fix. Uh, it needs to be fixed. It's good. Yes, yes. Um, I could I could put a leather, piece of leather behind it and stitch. Very, very good idea. Okay, okay. Excellent he, idea. He literally takes his boot off. Grabs his oh. dagger and starts cutting his boots. No, Perrin. No, 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 Perrin. No, you, you need you need those boots. You but need you need to be boots. protected. If you die, uh, my boots won't matter. You need those boots right now. Yeah, I mean, in this, possibly. I'm not sure where we will find a smith in this accursed land. Um, but I will wait. I will wait. Just eh bon. make sure the armor is clean. Eh bon. si, si. Oui, oui, oui. Laurelin, you get back up to the top. What are you doing? So I'm looking around again, but right off the bat, I'm going to cast uh, Detect. Well, it's not called Detect Magic in this. It's called uh, Sense Magic. Okay. And I'm going to go back to those runes and see if I can figure out anything now that it's daylight. Okay. Well, when you do the Sense Magic, it's sort of like you're like, and then you're right in the middle. And it wasn't there yesterday for sure you see a package that is definitely feeling like magic and it's a leaf wrapped package and it's just sitting in the middle of this 
sort of stone plateau flagstone area. And it, you were there yesterday. This was not there yesterday. And it's radiating magic. Well, that's peculiar. I go over there and kind of prod on it with my staff a little bit. So it's tink, tink, tink. When you, you can hear glass. And it's like wrapped up in paper? It leaves. Wrapped up in leaves. Yep. I'm going to carefully unwrap it. <laughs> okay. So you unwrap it, and there are three glass vials, They're like little phylactery type things. Uh, there's three of them. And there's a little piece of paper tied around them, like a parchment. I carefully, I'm not handling the vials really, but I'm just kind of carefully removing. Mm -hmm. little paper and see if I can decipher it. Okay, well, as you flip it over, you immediately realize it's written in Atalasian, which is no one writes in Atalasian anymore, and you actually can speak and read a little bit of Atalasian. Um, <clears throat> and uh, it says, for your health. And then there's a sigil that you don't recognize. So that I'm going to pull of all the birds... It's like you just suddenly become aware like the woods is alive around you with birds and sound. And it's like suddenly, and then like you can, you can smell blooming flowers in the wind all of a sudden. And then it just passes and it goes back to regular quiet noise of the woods. So there's three vials. Yep. Okay. Uh, I'm going to carefully wrap up the piece of paper and wrap it in another piece of harder parchment to protect it because uh, mm -hmm. I'm interested in that sigil and see maybe if I can figure out what that comes from. And then I'm going to carefully uh, wrap up the vials. Okay. And um, I guess pack them up in my satchel and take them with me. Okay. But I am going to give this place another uh, look over. Nothing really of note standing out. It was obviously some sort of old, old watchtower lookout, something like that. Okay, well, in that case, I'll uh, descend back down the stairs towards the campsite. Okay. So they've uh, by this point, you know, they're they're done eating and they're starting to break camp as you come back in. Everybody's sort of loading everything up and getting ready to go. Though no one seems to have decided where you're going. Uh, I kind of look at Esmeray. Is that the is that the mm -hmm. girl's name? Esmeray. Yeah. Well, what direction are we setting off? Yes, Marie. We clearly know our destination. She just smiles and she goes, our destination is middle of the lake. How we get there? Well, isn't that the wise man to tell us? Well, I'm not so... Um, yes, but uh, I'm not so um, familiar with these lands of the best course. I've never been here before either. Oh, very well. I guess we'll continue down the salt road then. As you're looking at her, you realize, like, she not only the white streak of hair, she looks a little bit taller, and she looks just like a couple years older. Like, you're starting to understand what happened that night with the, the Beast Man, and you're like, ooh, shit. <laughs> like, you can see it now. She's she's paid a price. She she cooked us breakfast, right? I didn't want to well, interrupt she, her earlier. She put together a cold breakfast for you. There's no fire. I still give her a sweet cake. Thank you. She breaks it in there. She breaks it in Perfect. half and gives half to uh, to uh, Perrin. What you got there, Kirby? Hmm? What you got? Food. What's that? Fine. Uh, you know, sharing is caring. Look, this was given to me. Philip, you've had more than enough to eat, and we have no more time to waste. So, Deville, are we ready to set off? Yes, yes. Um, the horses are good. My armor appears to be good. Therefore, all should be well. I Very well. Well, then I suggest... Sweet... We... Okay. Oh, no, no. I was just going to say, I, I suggest we uh, just continue down the salt road and see where the road takes us. And from there... Um... 
<laughs> we shall see. <laughs> I resist the urge to say roads. <laughs> We're going, we don't need, need roads, <laughs> but the salt road is good and dead at this point in time. So you're sort of picking a direction and heading it. Yes, Ethan, you hide your sweet cakes deeper. Oh, I'm back. protective of them now. Yeah. <laughs> So there's no evidence of where the road was. Well, there's like there, it's like it breaks off, right? Like you, 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 where from where you are, you're well and far from the road. So you'd have to find your way back to the road to pick it up again, and then the road itself is dead. So you're almost yeah. better off choosing an animal path that might lead you towards. You know where you need to go. You know the direction you're heading now. You don't know how you're going to get across the lake and all that fun stuff. But you know, let me run across and find out. But you have got, based on your knowledge of Escane. You've literally got days of travel and leagues before you're even going to hit the shore of the lake. Oh, <clears throat> this land deserved its fate. Their roads were not built to last. But that's the thing, right? The salt roads were built to last, but these ones here, it's almost like nature itself has turned against them. Across the rest of the island, all the old salt roads remain, even in places where they don't take as good care of them as, say, in Davon or Palabria, where they have road crews. But here, it's like nature and the land is trying to erase this whole thing. I'm biased against it, against them. Of course so, you are. Uh, yes. Yes. So, uh, Sir Gerard, biased No. Yes. Yeah, I will. I, uh, so, uh, before we mount it. Before we mount up or uh, escort the horses, because I'm sure we're not going to be mounted the whole time, I'm going to... You're on Shanks, Mayor. <laughs> pull a fane to the side. A fane, um, would you mind taking the rear and keeping watch? I wanted to be in the front. I was hoping to go ahead. Well, if you want to go ahead... From beside you, you hear that. You hear that. I, I, I can do the... You walk. I watch. Just take the rear, Fane. Uh, and the beast guy goes back into the woods. And as you guys start moving, you do notice he's he's doing a big circle around you all the time. Yeah, it's fine. Um, so I kind of lead the way. I'm assuming Sir Devere is probably up in front too because he wants to be in a leadership position. I'll stand yeah, what's, uh, what's your marching order there, months. gentlemen? Why don't you guys give me your marching order? I'm in the back. No, I was told to take the back. <laughs> I am bravely I marching because I'm a knight and I'm brave. I am bravely marching in the middle of the park. There you go. With Esmeré and Perrin. Very good place for you all to be. <laughs> the unarmed will be leading the Perrin will be center. So what's the order, please? Someone tell me the order and someone uh, who's got a pen and paper or a word document, they can keep track of it, please. I got it. Okay. So you're out, you're uh, the front? Who's at the front? Who's taking point? Well, I kind of start taking the front, but I'm assuming De Beers, because he's proud, is probably going to want to be in front. So I, yeah. I kind of let him take the lead. Well, if you let him take the lead, you're behind horses. Keep that in mind, because he's got a horse to lead. Uh, Paran will be leading yes. my horse. Oh, so you're having so the middle of your pack is all the horses. Okay. Yes. So Devere's in the front, then Lorian, then Ishmatar, I'm assuming. <laughs> well, I'll try and walk like alongside sort of Sergio. All right. So well, okay. So then it's Devere, Ishmatar, Laurelin, the Chewy Center of, of horses. <laughs> Politics of a marching Philip. order. What the hell? <laughs> Hello, that's <laughs> nice for you, right? So Philip, Esmeré, <laughs> and uh, Perrin with the horses in the middle. Then Bacht and Ethane both trying to see who's going to be in the back as they, you know, do this. I'm just moping. Back. I'm going to kick a rock every now and again. Like, this sucks. And, uh, <laughs> and keep... somewhere out there, the beast man is circling you all. I keep Kirby in front of me. <laughs> because I, I'm, I'm, not gonna, a... I'm not going to stop and be obstinate. Like, no, I'm going to be you know, whatever. Like, uh, I'm going to stay about 20 or 30 yards behind them as long as I can see them. But, you know. I know it's a deep forest. Yards, you wouldn't be able to see them and once you get into the woods. You have yeah. like 10 yards maximum between you guys. Oh, I can see even 30 forest. yards in the Black Forest. What is this place? <laughs> okay. Like, uh, the Black Forest has been reforested over time with lines of trees often. This is like old growth five centuries. You know what I mean? Like this is not nice woodland. This is rough. This is like... We're not I'm staying on an animal trail? Humans haven't put their feet here for a while, if ever, type of thing. So the animal okay. trails are what you have to follow, right? 
All right, you guys start moving. It is a rough go. I mean, this is you're you're basically on high ground, moving downward as you go, and then every now and then it ridges up, and there's haulers and stuff like that. Like it's it's this is a rough walk. So much so that I am going to need everybody to give me a roll under your PE on a D20 check, please. PE 14. Okay, let's see. No, 19. I feel tired. You're getting tired. Yeah, I failed. You're really tired. You're getting really, really tired. Um, to the point where you guys are going to have either a minus 5% on any percental checks or a minus 1 on any d20 checks until you get rest. Can I, can I use my reroll? If you choose, yes. Is, it, is okay. this just I'll... for the people who failed or is this for everybody? For the people who failed. Okay. No, I'll, I'll reroll then. Did you make yours bocked? Yep. I rolled oh, that's better. Hungard. Yeah, I got a 9. John, you made yours. Hungard, you make yes. yours? Yes. Made mine. Okay, so you 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 your re rolls burned and you're not doing so bad. So basically, Lorian, yes. you're getting tired, buddy. Yeah, I start leaning on my staff a little bit and looking back at the rest of the party, see if they're as tired as me. And when I realize they're not, I just try to remain as stoic as possible <clears throat> and just keep limping along. Fair enough. <laughs> Trying to keep pace. <laughs> another couple of hours of this, and you're starting to get really sore. And I would like you to give me another check, please, everybody, because it is still pretty rough stuff. And in case you have that minus one, well, minus one off your PE before you roll under it. Oh, dear. I passed. So you're actually, you've got your second win. You're like, I'm tired, but I'm not exhausted. I saw 13. I'm okay. I failed. So you guys are now that minus one, minus five thing. You're getting tired. Uh, same thing for you, Ishmatar. Bok, how'd you do? No, no, I'm good. I, I passed. You're good? Okay, you're fine. Sorry, Bok, how'd you do? Failed. You used okay. reroll and failed. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so you're you're okay. And Ouch. Hungar. I, I wrote a nat one. Okay, so you're doing all right. So basically, uh, Philip, Esmeré, and Perrin are enjoying a leisurely stroll in the woods as far as you can tell. Everybody else is like, Jesus Christ. I'm thing. literally sitting down. Yep, you stop and sit down. Yep. Athane just sits down, Bach. You see him sit down in front of you, and it looks like a really good idea. You can hear, though, in the distance, falling water. And you can smell it in the air now. Like, there's moisture in the air. There's, like, it's, there's, there's running water, open running water near you. And from the sound of it falling, it might be, even be a waterfall near. Keep moving, men. Uh, sounds like there's a good place to for you to rest your b weary bones. I, I am, I, of course, I am absolutely fine. Uh, uh. Yes, of course you are. But so De Vere's right. I think we should press on just a bit further. A fame, get up just a little further, and then we'll take a rest. Not to worry, lad. Fine. Are you guys really going to let a fat monk out to you in the wilderness? You're too drunk to know. <laughs> so horrible. So horrible. Says so, Gerard and I seem to be doing fine. <laughs> Gerard's yes. dragging an ass. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Are you fine? Are you not, Sir Gerard? You're okay. I, I am absolutely fine. Don't be casting aspersions as to my physical fitness. Cast spells. <laughs> Is everybody here a wizard? <laughs> <laughs> no, I assure you, there's only one wizard here. It's the gypsy girl. She looks at you, kicks you in the shin. Okay, Chito. maybe. Rover. Not a hard kick, but enough to sort of make you go, uh, you know, type thing. And then she hands you half of her honey cake that she had put into her dress, uh, Philip. Uh -huh. I got sweet honey. It's really good. It's like really good. Like, go back, kill Basil, marry Polly good. Um, <laughs> like, it's that kind of good. <laughs> oh, I know his box got, or Kirby's got to sleep sometime. 
So you guys push on, and it's not an easy go. But about 45 minutes later, the path you're on comes down, and you can hear it now. It's rushing water. It's getting louder. It's really good. And the air is very thick with moisture, which is actually refreshing a little bit for you guys. It's making your, you feel a little more, you know. And the smell is very, very, very wet forest now. Moist, in fact. As you basically come through and the trees part, and you can now see there is a cliff face with a waterfall cascading over it, and then below you is a giant pool, and that pool is filling up and then cascading off again on another waterfall continuing down. And from here, there's an opening. You can see way the fuck off in the distance the the shimmer of the lake you're heading for. Like, way... Like, you compare it to the vision you had last night, Laurelin, uh, and it's like... Like, you were looking at it with the Hubble last night. Like, it's insane how close it looked compared to this, where you can see it way off in the distance on the horizon. But there's a beautiful, refreshing pool right there, and there's this whole area. Like, it's a very good sort of open area for resting. Well, we will rest here for an hour or so, but I warn you, do not wander far. There are mysterious things here in the forest. Well, I'm not going it. far, but... Uh... I'm getting in a certain stage of undress and I'm going swimming and standing under that waterfall. Okay. We'll we'll be taking else. our turns in the water. Um, Pao? I, I don't recommend water. going into the water. Why not? Like I said, this forest is strange and mysterious and I even I do not quite understand all its mysteries. And mysterious pools in a deep, dark forest are usually not a good thing. It's a waterfall. I'm, I'm going swimming. I, I'm, I'm going swimming. Precisely. I'm I'm get clean. Clean. On, okay. I'd like to. Athane's going swimming. What's Devere doing? Swimming. He's going swimming. What's Ishmatar doing? I want to try and, like, detect ambush. Okay, you're paranoid looking around for an ambush. <laughs> I mean, Bach, hey, you, it's good to be paranoid. <laughs> yeah, what's Bach doing? I'm going to keep an eye on the idiot swimming in case anything happens. Okay, what's Philip doing? I am going to try to start a fire because I you can't want start hot a fire food. here. He's out of practice. <laughs> like, this is like the wettest part you could possibly be, and there's no way. You, to you know what? That I'm, I'm swinging off the robe and cannonballing into the water. So four naked idiots are in the water. No, wait, three. Devere, Ethan, and Philip. Okay. It takes me a little while, though, unfortunately. Yeah. Because oh, yeah, parents are helping you take it. off yeah, all the yeah. stuff. Laurelin, uh, what are you doing while they're doing all of this? Well, as they're getting undressed, I'm going to cast Sense Magic. Okay, go ahead and make the roll for that. Uh, is there a roll for that? No, I guess it's just an automatic uh, thing. I it? don't think it's a roll. I think it's automatic. No roll uh, allows me to sense or feel the presence of magic, like a Geiger counter. Uh, so I'm going to have to like walk around. So I kind of walk around the edge of the pool. There's definitely magic in that pool. Definitely, Ethan. As you're swimming through the water, happily enjoying the refreshing feeling, your muscles like it's cold mountain water, right? So it's really refreshing. I'm just um, going to the waterfall to shower. I'm not yeah, frolicking, well, gotta, but I just want to be clear. Swim to the waterfall. That's, oh, that's right? cool. That's cool. As you're getting closer to the waterfall, um, you feel something along your underside. And as you ah, sort of what was look, that? as you look, because you're underwater holding your breath at this moment in time, you see a female in the water looking at you. Make a save versus spell, please. Oh, 13. Oh, so you make the save. So you actually do oh. have control of yourself because save versus spell is 12. Okay. Uh, as she uh, she swims up close to you and kisses you. Oh. Save again. I'm here for the girls. This is okay. Uh oh, nine. What? Nine. Nine. So it's a really good kiss. And you oh, find yeah. yourself getting pulled into the kiss as. Philip cannonballs into the water beside you, breaking the kiss as this female just off into the water. 
Philip, you didn't see shit, but Thane, you realize you just drank a lung full of water. I need you to give me a save versus death, um, save versus lethal, 14 or higher. Sorry, 11 or higher on a natural, natural 20. So you're like, and you surface coughing your lungs out. <laughs> All of you are aware of what's going on. I that told you the water wasn't safe. Do you want to come out now? Splashing. I, I don't even care what he's saying. I'm splashing my way back to <laughs> shark. A hand grabs your ankle and yanks you strongly under the water again. Philip, give me a D20 roll, please. Yes, sir. D20. 16. You see as you're like in the water and you're like, you, you did a deep drop on this cannonball. And as you sort of like, you know, look around before you start surfacing again, you see in just this female go up into the light and grab a Thane's foot and start pulling him down under the water, drowning him. Can I try to punch it? Not underwater, no, and you're far away from it. Uh, okay, I swim over to a Thane and yeah, try to I grab mean, a... So do you have swimming skill? No. Well, you ain't doing shit except trying to surface then, sir. Thane, I need you to give me another uh, lethal save, please. 11 okay. or higher. Seven, nope. So you're now starting to drown, and you can feel it as she's pulling you down deeper into the water. Philip, you can see what's happening, but you've got a surface. You've got no air in your lungs. You're going to start drowning yourself. Up I top, surface. what are the rest of you doing? Sorry, was that Philip? I surface. Okay, so Philip's about to surface. What are the rest of you doing? Perron, get a move on. Get my arm off quickly. So he's moving as fast as he can. Philip surfaces. Get out of the water, Philip, as quickly as possible. Yeah, no shit. There's some trying to drown the thing. Yes, I warned you that it wasn't safe, but you did not listen. You did not heed my warning. I didn't hear you. Well, now you're hearing me. Get out of the damn water. What are the rest of you doing? He just said something's trying to drown a Thane. Ishmatar, what are you doing? Well, I know that I can't dive in quickly enough with all this armor on weighing me down. So you I have just swimming, sort you have of shout skill? to someone else. Do you have swimming skill? Then no, I you don't. figure you can't. Bach, what are you doing? I'm going to do what I can to help uh, Philip get out. I can't swim. Okay. Philip's being pulled out of the water. Devere, what are you doing? I'm trying to get my arm, arm off as fast as possible. because I don't Do have you have swimming skill? skill? No. Nope. Okay, so he's he's getting the armor off, but there's not a lot you can do. Lorian, Loralan, what are you doing? How far how far over is Thane in the water? You have no idea. I can't see him at all. You, you know he's okay. I'm gonna approach the water and say, Good spirits of the water, would you have would you parlay with me? You have any skill you can bring to bear on this? Um, I'm looking at your character sheet too. I'm not seeing anything. I don't know if there's any skills really I have. Give me a P and MA check. Roll under your MA on a D20. Okay. I did so. At the far side of the, uh, the pond, of the pool, you see this bluish female come up out of the water and dump a Thane's body on the rocks. A Thane's out cold, like <laughs> water coming out of his mouth and what have you. And she just looks at you and she's just perched curiously. Behind you, you can hear. I put up my hands like this and I kind of look at Sir Devere and, you know, I kind of give this like facial nod at him and then a Thane. So, you know, let him know somebody needs to take care of a Thane. And I kind of put on my the far side of the pool with her. She's holding. Oh, oh like on the other side. Yeah. Okay, I got you. All right. I approach the edge. I say, "Good spirit of the water, I am Lorenlin Lockwald, and these are my compatriots, wizard, and friend of the forest, and of the fey creatures. Do so would I be know. familiar with? Well, I wait for her to speak." Okay. Does she speak or say anything? She just sort of looks at you, sort of points at a thing, and then looks back at you and says, 
we accept your offer. Why is this a problem? Did you not give him freely to the pool? No, I do not give him to the pool. Though maybe we could come to some other arrangement. You see, young Fain here is not familiar with your bargaining, but I am. Is there something else we can bargain for besides young Fain's life? You gave to the pool. We accepted the offer. Now you wish the offer back? By the way, now Perrin is starting to put your armor back on you. Severe. He's like reversing speed of what he was doing. There was no offer given. Offer accepted. You cannot take it back. He is ours. You can keep the fat one. No, that will not do. Is there any other arrangement we can come to? Counter. I pull out something the, else. I pull out the three vials. <laughs> and she backs away against the rocks. Have you ever had a honey cake? She's just staring at you right now, <laughs> looking a bit feral. I, I put a I pull a honey cake out of Philip's pouch, or out of your uh, a thing's pouch. Well, you're gonna have to go to his pouch, dig through it, and get a honey cake. He didn't just leave him lying around, right? He's he no, no, no. Been, I, I really, I did. I draw. I dropped trow and just yeah. But he's got to go get it out. Yeah, so. fair. Yeah, I go get a honey cake out of the pouch. Okay. Mm -hmm. That'll take a minute, but it's an option. Don't worry. I hear you. Who do we lose? Well, oh, we lost. Besides souls and lives, is there anything else you would take? Where did you get those? I do not know. They just came into my possession. I suspect it was one of your um, friends in the forest. That is not forest oh really well, what is witches ah witches and you have some quarrel with the witches do you unnatural they are too right they are use us our blood our water our land abomination and do they continue to do so? Offer accepted. Go now or pay price. Very well. Um, uh, but we will be taking a fane with us. She puts her hand, and now you see when her hand goes down, it's no longer the gentle hand of a female. It's spread out. It's got webbing between it, and there are mm. talons on the end. And you can see her body starting to change, and she's starting to take on a little more monstrous look, and like spikes go like out of her back, black spikes. Her eyes roll black into her head. She's got fangs coming in. She's like, and she puts her hand on the thing. She goes, Offer accepted. Go now. No, offer not accepted. Though we might could come to some other compromise if you will tell me what else you desire. But you cannot have it opens her mouth and wails. Everyone make a horror save, please. And she has a horror factor of 12. 19. No, well, you're not horrified by it, but it is uncomfortable. I failed. 12. I've got 12. Wait, what? What do we need? D20. Roll a D20. You need a 12 or higher, unless you have a bonus for your class, for your whatever your horror factor, I'd say it is. Oh, I've got 11. So, okay, one, two. Devere, what, uh, Ethan, you're unconscious. Laurelin failed. Baron failed. Esmeré failed. Huh, beast guy didn't fail. Uh, so, who didn't fail? Philip and the beast guy. Oh, I make I failed. This whale is inhuman. It's like racing through your ears. It's causing your teeth to ache. It's setting your nerves on edge. And then you see in the middle, 
Yeah, some of you still have a reroll, by the way. If you want to use your reroll, don't forget that. Good point, Scar Hermit. As you see, <clears throat> the water in the middle of the pool is starting to bubble as if something is coming. You have one action, and then we go to initiative. What are you doing with your one action? Did I find the honey cake? You found the honey cakes. I offer her a honey cake. I was like, have you if, ever had if, this? It's evident she does not want your honey cake. She wants Ethane's blood at this point. All right, so you're, you're, like, you're like, honey cake. And she's just like, <laughs> Is there any way around the pool to get nope. to where they're at? Nope. There's an entire pool in the way and a waterfall on the far end and a waterfall on the other end. I draw my sword. Yep. Ready to fight for yes. life. Um, I, I can't do anything else apart from that either. Can I take an action if I'm horrified? Yes. You are horrified, but you can take an action that isn't against the horror. I have a question. Yes. I'm going to say something. We do have three other rerolls besides the extra rerolls that Squirrel got. So we have plenty of rerolls if you guys want to reroll your horror. Thane, what penalty do I take from the horror, though? Um, well, you can't attack it directly because you're horrified by it. But it was against the whale. Once oh. the whale passes, the horror effect of the whale is gone. Okay. Thane, you're waking up and you feel bad, I need you to give me, uh, just to roll under your PE, please. Under my PE, okay. Yeah. Uh, got 11, my PE is somewhere around there. Oh my God, where is it? 13, okay, I made it. So you're not, you're like, you're starting to get your senses back and you're starting to like clear your head and you're aware that this monster is right beside you now. Okay, so what are you doing? Devere's draws sword, Ishmatar drew his sword. What's Bach doing? Same. Sword. Hunger, uh, Philip offered up a cake and realized that shit ain't happening. Kirby woke up. What's Laurelin doing? Laurelin doing? I'm kind of like shaking my boots and I raise up my staff and I cast energy field and then like stammering, I say, gather around me, gather around me. Okay. As he says that, out of there's an explosion of water out of the pool as basically you see, how would we describe this? Imagine it looks like a cone almost, but an organic cone. Like it's 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 sort of gets tapers to the top. It has a single eye in the middle of the cone, and then it has about a half dozen tendrils whipping around coming out. It's quite large, and it has a horror factor of 12. Everybody, please make a horror factor save against it. 16. Fuck. Hmm. I, ain't, I ain't scared of shit. You fail. And we want to use their rerolls. There are literally rerolls on the table for you guys. Not going to use your one. <laughs> we, have, we have one more reroll. Is that mm -hmm. what I yeah, there's three rerolls from the last session that are still uh, banked. And then you ha each had one reroll that was given to you. So you've already spent that. So you can use one of the three. Okay. I'll use one of the three. And I still failed. Okay, so you're like, ha, huh, ha, huh. not good. Ishmatar, what'd yeah. you get? I got a one. Okay, so your father used to tell you stories about jinn from the old land and how the jinn in this world were very different than the ones from where your ancestors came from. And this is the first thing you've ever seen that is that terrifying. When you thought the fucking water girl was bad, this is like worse than the water girl. Bakht, what'd you get? Ten. So you're like, ah, this is what this is what we were warning about. This is what I was raised to watch out for. Evil, evil, evil. You hear what you get? 16. So you're like, finally, something to prove my knightly might. Got it? Uh, Kirby, you failed, right? Yeah. Okay, so you're just like, this is beyond you at this point in time. You're like trapped be you're trapped naked behind monsters. And there's a cliff. Behind. I'm I'm lay I'm laying down still, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh Lockwald, this is uh this is this is some dark shit. It's initiative for those who can fight, those who can't attack it because they failed their horror factor. You can at least defend yourselves. It gets a thirteen. I got a thirteen. My glow in the dark D twenty is on fire today. <laughs> Natural twenty. <laughs> Eighteen. Uh, Eighteen. Okay. Yep. You got a twenty. I get a plus twenty. I get plus oh, 19. So what's your total there, Devere? 22. 
22. Philip? I'm looking for my initiative right now. I, I, oh, so roll initiative? Yeah, yeah. You can still take defensive actions. Kirby, what were you going to ask? Total of 19. Total of 19? Okay. Hang on. 12. 12? 12. 12. I got a total. Yeah, hunger. Fourteen. Why is your camera off, by the way? Because I was eating popcorn and I didn't want to freak Max out. Well, that's fair and nice of you. <laughs> so uh, the highest is uh, Cody with a twenty something, but he's stepped away for a minute. So we'll go to the next highest, which is Devere with a twenty-one. What are you doing? Uh, I'm going to st uh, step to the edge of the water. Um out give us our boy back foul fiend what what vile magic is this sergeant dance put five re-rolls on the table for you guys thank you and five, sorry, three, 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 three. Well, not five, I'm, three. and uh, i'm gonna try and hit it with my sword all right go ahead and roll the hit please nine and uh, my do i have any bonus to hit do I, do I, do I? You should. Strike bonus of plus three. So yeah. a total of 11? 12. 12. 12. It's going to try and uh, parry that with its arm, which it can because it has armored skin. It does not. So it tries to wiggle out, so you manage to hit it. Uh, a total of 12. You actually get past its AR, so this is direct damage. Excellent. A mighty you five there, points. Malachi? Sorry, what did you say, uh, John? Uh, a massive five points. Oof. So you basically like hit the tendril and sort of dig into a bit as a little bit of bluish green blood gunk spews out of it. That was on 21. We go to 19, which is the next highest, which is Ishmatar. What are you doing? Um, well, seeing as I can't attack it directly because I'm horrified by it, I'm, I guess I just sort of stand ready waiting to defend myself in case anything does come at me. Okay, fair enough. Next highest after 19 is... I also had a 19. 19? What are you doing on 19? Kirby? I am staying as still as possible. I'm dead. Okay. Yep. Fair enough. Who's the next highest after 19? Oh, Kobe, it's Cody's back. What are you doing on your turn, Cody? Well, I'm horrified, I assume, so I'm just standing there. No, you can still do stuff defensive. You just can't do anything offensive to it. Uh, well, okay. Um, you put up your energy shield, right? Yeah, I got my energy shield up. And I'm still kind of like stammering and yelling, gather around me. Okay. Next highest would be Philip had a 13. What did Bach have? 12. Okay. So Philip and the monster go. So Philip, you go first, then the monster. I'm going to hit the monster with my stick. If you're running up to the edge of the water and trying to hit it with its stick, go ahead. Mm. 18. 18 will hit. It's trying to parry. Oh, buddy, it rolled an 18 before its bonus. So basically, you, you get this, like, your stick is going straight for its eye, and then this tendril comes up and just knocks your stick aside. You almost had it. It goes. It has six attacks because of its six arms. So, Devere, you're getting attacked. Defend versus a 12. Parry. Okay. Uh, no. Uh, that's eight. So what's your AR? 15. Okay, so it doesn't go through your armor. I'll tell you what it does in a second. Philip, defend against a 16. Two plus so two, you four. four. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> Bocked. Defend against a five. With the way I've just been rolling lately. This is true. 13. So you're fine. Oh, I'll tell this return when he comes back. Cody. 11. Nope. So you're taking a hit. And Ishmatar, parry a five. Fox, I got a one. Okay. <laughs> so everybody who failed to parry takes five points of SDC. Uh, Hungar, you take that straight through because you're not wearing armor. So you take it right through your SDC. I have an SDC of six. Okay, so well, you would have but, an SPC of one. Yes, Cody. Yes. Is this uh, considered a ley line? Ah. 
Yes, it is. This is considered a ley line point. Okay. Nexus. A nexus, thank you, you smug cunt. <laughs> jerk. What a jerk. Five points of damage. Five right, points I've of damage. Okay, anybody's got second attacks, now's the time to take them. Okay. Is this still the same round? Yes. Uh, yeah, I still can't do anything because I'm horrified, so I'll just stay defensive. What'd you get? 14. 14. It does not parry. Give me your damage, please. And that goes straight to the meat. My D6 is letting me down tonight. Four. Four. And you did how much last time? Five. You chop off that tendril. It's now down to five tendrils left. Excellent. Okay. Uh, Philip. I am going to try to hit it again. Rip my it. stick. Four. I think you need a five minimum to hit, don't you? But I get plus two, so that's well, a six. That's a six. <laughs> it is able to parry your clumsy attack, sir. Right. All righty. I'm uh, going to use a reroll. Okay. 20. Plus two, 22. All right, so you managed to hit. Give me your damage, please. Woo-hoo! Two points of damage. Nice. You poke it in the eye and it goes, ow. All <laughs> right. <laughs> Devere, you have a third attack? I do. Please make it. <sighs> Eight. Fuck, you hit. <laughs> <laughs> Just let you know in chat, I do 2d6 damage, and so far I've done a total of 9 with 4d6. So let's see how this one goes. Yeah, let's see how it goes. That's better already. 7. 7, as you basically cut another of the tendrils off, leaving only 4 now that are available for it to attack. It's used all its attacks on its turn. It has no more attacks left. You've used all your attacks. Everybody else has used all their attacks. Uh, everybody who failed their horror save gets to make another one at the end of the round. Rolling. Make uh, another save. Another horror save at the end of the round, yes. Okay. Well, but so now you've seen it getting hurt, you know it can be hurt. Yeah. Uh, my action for um, the round, I was going to move over by GM Cody. That's fine. Yep. You're, you're standing next to Lockwald. Okay. This D fucking, this dice hates me. I got a two. Use a reroll. You're a reroll. I'm using a reroll. No, no, I'm not using a reroll for that. Well, you always. use a reroll. Jeez, no, I will it. take this. I will take this like a man. We have five of them. Come on, I guys. Did. Well, you have four now because he just used one. So uh, you succeeded? Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay, box in the fight. Cody, you made your reroll? Yeah, I made it natural. You, you like, ah, this, is, this is flesh and blood. This can be killed. This isn't a demon. This is just a monster. Okay. Ishmatar, did you use a reroll or not? No, I'm not using nope. it. I'm just I... stood there, still horrified, like my father warned me about uh... this, but I didn't believe him. <laughs> Kirby, are you not using a reroll? Not for horror nope. factor, no. And did you make a second save? Oh, I failed it. But real quickly, so is is the is the former girl now monster chick still next to me? Oh yeah, and she's still got okay. that clawed hand on your shoulder. Yep. Then I'm still sleeping. As far as she's concerned, I'm still out. Nope, right. not happening. Not for the happening. Next round. Let's go. Monster gets one. Plus two, three. Fifteen. Mm -hmm. Seven. Oh. Nine. Hungar? Seventeen. Bocked? Damn you, Hungar. Sixteen. Ishmatar? Um, which one am I adding as a bonus? Is it strike or roll? You should have a bonus which... on your character sheet, Ishmatar. Oh, right. I got an eight. Beans. Can I help you? <laughs> you can't have the dice. They're not. He's like, you. he's like, I want to play. No, he wants mm -hmm. the dice. Okay, can you get comfortable, please? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You good? <laughs> <laughs> you look like you're thinking. Uh oh. Yeah. There we go. Now you're gonna get. There we go. I knew you weren't comfortable yet. Okay. You feel better? Good. All right. So it got a one. Who's got the highest on your side? I have a 17. Okay, you go first. What are you doing? I'm going to hit it with my stick again. Seven. 
it parries. It only has four parries now because it's lost two arms. <laughs> <laughs> Who's next after 17? 11. 16, 15, 14, 13. 12. Yeah. It does not parry. Give me your damage, please. Seven. So you cut off another one of its arms. It's down to three. Devere. Oh, five. It parries. Lachlan, Lockwald, what are you doing? I kind of look at my compatriots, and then I raise up my staff and start chanting some magical incantation. You can see runes forming in the air as I point my finger towards it and fire off an energy bolt. Okay. So it's a parry of 18 to save. 12. Okay. Now, this is important. Is it a ley line or is it a ley line nexus? It's a nexus. Okay. All right. So... 10, 13, uh, 24, <laughs> 26. Wow, nice. Uh, 29 points of damage. So he blasts the center eye out of it, splattering gunk on the wall of the, the rocks above your head, Ethan, as he basically just goes, <laughs> and this thing just goes, <laughs> oh, thanks, bye. He goes, <laughs> into the water. She's like, <gasps> Wizard, and then she just drops down, puts her hands over her head, and goes completely prostrate, uh, prostrate on the uh, the rocks. Ethan, that's not right. I am a wizard, and you should fear for your life, demon. Back to the hell spawn water you came from, and leave us be. There is no bargain, and there will be no bargain done, and you will let us pass over your waters without any other detriment. So be it. Wizard. And then she dives in the water and disappears. Well, I think we should um, press on, don't you? Lockwood. Athane, are you all right over there? By the way, from above you, Athane, you hear a, a noise, and as you look up, you see the beast guy drop down beside you, and he's like... <sighs> and he no, no, that that didn't help. Now I'm just going to stay laying there like... <laughs> he spent two rounds going to, 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 to get ready to drop down and save you, and Wizard Boy fixed it. And next well, time I, I give you a word of warning, it's better to listen, don't you think? While nobody's watching, I eat a honey cake. <laughs> I'm getting up slowly, probably Lock very walls. pale, yeah. taking the long the way around the pool. Under the waterfall, back around, yep, okay. Going back to my clothes, covering my shame. <laughs> Drink is now that the was creature the, is dead, what? I sort of snap out of the horror. Was covering the water cold? Gerard is getting frustrated at not being listened to. Lockwald, we must speak. Yes. Rest of you gather your things together. I go off to the side with uh, Sir De Beer. Lockwald. Were this a land in which I have jurisdiction for the admission you keep making, I would have you arrested. Well, it's a good thing we're not in your lands, is it? Please take care when announcing your your curse. It is not a curse, sir. Uh, it is a blessing. And if it weren't for my blessing, all of you might be dead right about now. And next time I give a warning, you would be wise to listen. If so shall we continue? If it weren't for my sword and my bravery, we would likely be dead right now. Well, it was your sword and your dull wits that got us in this mess in the first place. But I will say you did well, Sir De Beer. Yes, I did, didn't I? You can handle yourself well, and you were definitely proven your skills as a knight. 
Knightly skills will always prevail over wizardly skills. Remember that. We shall see. But in the meantime, I think we should leave this place, don't you? Instead of sitting Absolutely. here talking. Absolutely. It has the taint of foul magic. And all it magic does. is foul. If you say so. But I think you will find otherwise in the future. Come, let us go. And I just kind of walk away. I'm not really faced by this conversation. I've, I've had people put me down for magic all my life. I'm just kind of like, okay, whatever. Hey, Bacht. Mm -hmm. How's Gerhard feeling about all this? I mean, the Estradi are really anti-magic, right? But you are a apostate. But how's he feeling about everything he just saw? Better, better alive than dead right now. Okay, so he's a survivalist at heart. Makes sense. So you guys uh, follow the wet stones down from this waterfall. The horses have a miserable time of it. As you realize, as you're getting deeper, these horses are not going to be... It's rough. Like, it's hard. Like, you literally are going down wet rocks, leading horses who don't want to go down wet rocks. <clears throat> it takes you hours to get down to dry ground where you're no longer right beside a waterfall because of this. By that point in time, half the day is gone for sure. And the sun is now hanging, starting to hang lower in the Western sky. The forest lays before you. You find at the bottom, the remnants of the salt road, which might give you a mile or two of lighter travel than what you've been handling. I'm, I'm going to use my land navigation to see if we can't find a clear way. You can try. 14 out of 30. There is no clearer way. This is the wilds. Which really concerns you, Ishmatar, because you can hear faint music and laughter on the wind. Do you, do you do you guys hear that? Hear what? What are you talking I hear, about? I can hear a faint sound coming from over yonder. Don't let it kiss it's, you! It's the waterfall. Yeah. No, no, it sounds like people. It sounds like voices. Like music, even. Ignore it. It's Kirby, just more, can it's I, more fey magic. Kirby, you can catch I this. use my land navigation? You catch the smell of a fire, like a like a fireplace or something like that, coming along the wind. The wind is coming up the valley now towards you. By the way, I'm just I'm gonna start slowly walking in that direction. <laughs> now I can smell smoke or fire or something. I can't see you. It's night. <laughs> Blackout conditions. Blackout conditions. Blackout conditions. <laughs> This land is tainted. It got what it deserved. Can I use yeah, my land navigation to try and see if I can figure out where it's coming from? It's coming from ahead of you. You don't even need to roll, guys. It's up the valley. No. Can I see any smoke trails? Or So now you guys are looking. It's dark. Yeah. You can see smoke coming up over the, 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 the woods about maybe half dozen leagues away. Let's go check it out. No, no, Does it let, look no, like, no. There's like a slight glimmer of, of fire anywhere. No, you can't see anything through the trees. No. Just smoke. F Guys, fire look, is good. There's let, a smoke let the trail land over there. Burn. I think we should go towards it. Just let the land burn. Sir so, Gerard, I would not be so hasty to judge magic users. Huh. I don't think it's no. magic, Sir Devere. I think it might be a campsite. Sir yes. Gerard, could you show us on the doll where the magic hurt you? <laughs> no, but I could show you the tip of my sword, Philip. <laughs> what do you think, Sir so Gerard, I understand magic yeah. might be, you know, frowned upon, but at the end of the day, he did save our lives. I mean, 
I was horrified by the thing. I couldn't do anything. If it wasn't for him, I might be dead. So I have to thank him. Then you must summon your inner self, your inner soul. Your bravery was tested. Your bravery was found wanting, young Navri. Do not let it happen again. Oh my god, I hate this place! I will, I not, I will not stand Stop here and be lambasted by it. Just move for... I'm just walking. <laughs> I hate you! I hate this place! I'm walking. Kirby. I, I'm, with, I'm with young Kirby. I hate you too. I start walking. I, by the way, I didn't say it to Sir any Sir Gerard, need person. I remind you that you were the one who was mortally wounded in battle and not me. Don't give me <laughs> that, that speech. True. That is true. I have... Have I stepped down from any battle since you have met me? No, I have not. No, you, no, no, no. On the other hand, were found wanting earlier. I didn't run away. I didn't run away. You did not engage the foe? I defended myself. An act myself. of cowardice. Did I not? An act of cowardice. No, that was not an act of cowardice. I was still defending myself. I did not run away. I did not shy away from the battle. What Kirby, let's go magic to lead us. Kirby and Philip have walked away. Yeah, I'm going to stop them. You're going to stop Kirby and Philip? Yeah. Okay. So while Devere and Ishmatar are bickering the finer merits of chivalry, um, Box stands in front of the two of you and listen. You may have met him as a guy chained up in a cage, but he's not a small man, and he's no, not an unscary-looking man. Like, and he's got his sword, and he looks like, you know, what are you saying? What are you doing, Bach? I, guys, look what just happened when you jumped into a a pond. This whole off. place is horrible. We come in here, don't know why we're here, and, oh, can't swim in a pool, can't see the sun, can't shoot an arrow, can't do anything. Let's just get the hell on out of here. Can we just go back? I don't think that's an option Boy. at this point. And we're all I, griping totally at each would. other. We're all arguing. We're not getting along. Like this. Why are we here? Ask we the are. magic man. No, no, you're back having an argument with with uh, Ishmatar. This is a little further up the road. Two separate arguments happening, guys. Let's keep them separate. I, I don't know if the knight has got hemorrhoids or something, but he has just been in a foul mood all day. Everybody's in a it's this place. I'm telling you, it's this place. If you really don't want us, fine. I'll sit right here. I, I don't want. I don't want any of this. I don't want any of this. Just don't wander off, or you could get into a worse predicament than you just were. I under, I, I yeah, yes, don't yes. Don't want to see something happen to you. We're here for a reason. We need to figure it out, and we need to work together because all this infighting is doing is making everybody miserable. So everybody quit bitching at each other. And let's figure out what the hell we're going to do. I'm sorry. I'm scared, okay? Oh, I'm not bitching at you. I'm bitching at the two knights. One of them is hating on everybody. Sir freaking cloth merchant over here with the crappy armor. And he's <laughs> dragging everybody down. This, this, let's get along. Let's get along and figure out what the hell we're going to do. Before we spend another freezing night in the woods, okay? Shane, you, feel a, you feel a hand take your hand, and as you look down, you see Esmeralda just holding your hand, and she's just, you know, doing this, you know, just, uh, you know, calming you down, trying to make you feel grounded. She's just making, you know, she's not doing anything other than that. I, I got it. Yeah. Yeah. Probably at this point, then, uh, a Thane, just because, you know, all the emotional stuff. I'm not bawling, but I probably have, like, a tear or something, you know, just through the uh, the outburst. So... This whole thing is just. And she's looking right at Lockwald with that look that she gives you. That's like that do something look she gives you every now and then. She's mm -hmm. giving you that do something look. Yeah. So Lord really is annoying. standing there between, between the two with his arms crossed, like his staff between his arms like this, looking at Sir De Devere with this scolding look like you're better than this. And then looking at the other party like. Y'all are better than this, and just waiting for him to get it all out. <clears throat> <laughs> and meanwhile, you're 
fucking your bulldog box is like in front of them all, blocking all passage. This is fun. Yeah, so I, I assume we are. Um, we've let it all the emotions out, have we? We've Which proved you to think a man to? has. Have we? I look at Devere. That's not going to help us right now. What is going to help us is continue forward on our quest. This is this journey we are on is beyond all of us to save many. Let it be known, Lockwald, that the events of in the due to the events of today. You have gone down in my estimation. I'll be thinking twice about following your wisdom in the future. I told After you before, all, you came on this quest willingly. You can turn back if you want, and anybody else I that did, wants to at this point can. But, but I, I am not, going forward. I was not aware of your admission that you were a man of magic. I well, sense I... something weird about you. But to proudly pro proclaim... I am a wizard and do so with without without shame without even a tinge of shame well, I look I, I, coldly I at him and let him right. continue his conversation and then I, I look him squarely in the face and point point my finger right just almost touching Sir Devere's nose, and I say, yes, I am a wizard, a sorcerer, a warlock, a man of the magic. And if you do not Please wish to follow me or do not trust me, that is fine. Please you will come that. on this quest willingly, and you did to begin with, and if you did not realize that, you are a fool, sir. Please keep that finger, peasant finger away from me. I will continue. Uh, I'll, I'll be watching you. The man talks about honor, but then he turns on his companions that he made an oath with. How night can you get? Very well. I turn around like nothing happened and just continue walking along, look behind me. Well, how about the rest of you? Let's go. Let's go. We're waiting on you. I start walking towards the uh, campsite. Get up, right. my father would not me approve of me following you, but I know this is what my mother would have wanted because she knew about the existence of magic and actually believed in it. Whereas my father just was in denial about this. Your father seems wise. Your mother seems foolish. And you seem like it's hard to ride a horse with that stick up your foot. Uh, I hate this place. I hate this place. I will take disrespect to myself, but not towards my parents, said Devere. Be very cautious. I will take no threats from a youngster such as yourself. And I will take no threats from someone who bought his way into knighthood. Oh! oh. <laughs> Wash your mouth out. Wash your mouth out. You started you started this. You disrespected my mother. How dare you? You are the one who have shown cowardice. Cowardice? If it wasn't for me, you'd be dead. Don't you dare speak to me like that. You showed cowardice at the pool. You could have died, was it not for me? That Don't was my dare. fault, okay? Will you two shut up? It was not your fault. You made a mistake. Lessons were learned. I assume. Am I correct, younger Fane? I can't look him in the eye. Just nod. Very well. Sir Devere, have you proven your honor, your worth, your chivalry? Because all this out in the woods, out in the middle of nowhere, close to night, is doing us no good. And I think we need to figure out what is in front of us and find a good place to settle down, don't you? Very well. I continue on. All right. Bought us away in the knighthood. <laughs> you walk. 
you follow the oldest part of the salt road. And then after a corner, after it turns, you suddenly see the roads a little bit better all of a sudden. Not quite good, but slightly maintained. And then as you continue following it, it curves again, and you come out, and as you round this bend in the road, you see before you a village. Like an actual village with stone buildings and fires burning in chimneys and sounds of music and food cooking and people walking about doing stuff as evening is setting upon them. And as you stand there trying to process this in your heads, we'll take our break because it's been two hours. Everyone go get your food, get your drinks, do what you got to do, hit the head. We're back in 15 minutes. So we'll be back here at 520 Eastern time. We'll be back. And for those of you watching, sorry, we need to take a break. It's a four hour session. I'll sit here and dance like a monkey. <laughs> beep, 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 beep. <laughs> that Cody, Cody's regretting uh, joining this party. <laughs> How are you doing, chat? How's well, chat enjoying it so far? Did you see Al's comment? I've seen, yeah, most of them, yeah. But like, uh, uh, I wonder, does, am I Cameron? Moon? Carmen? I don't know. <laughs> Uh, are you drunk? Because, <laughs> well, I mean, in time of the twins, well, he, was, he was drunk. Yeah. But... Well, yeah, because he had, like, nothing to do. Yeah. The best word, is that, the, I don't know why I remembered this, but from that book is when he called Fist and Dantilus, or we will race him, but he called him Fist and Dantadoodle. <laughs> I don't know. That's something about that has <laughs> always stuck with me. <laughs> Dude, I got to I have to reread the trilogy. I haven't read it since I was in high school. Now, Tannis yeah. would be the leader, so I don't think that, uh, I think it'd be more Caraman. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, no, no. Um, Riverwind. Because he was oh, quiet most yeah. of the time. I'll take it. I always liked Riverwind. Hi, am I the Kender? <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's an insult. <laughs> oh. All right, I'm, I'm going to get up for a moment here, too. Yeah, same here, same here. Oh, by Definitely. the way, do you guys same see here. the new picture that, that Bear made for me? I mean, I think it is so yes. apt for the character. Oh, yeah. Now that everybody else is away, I'm taking bets on which one kills the other one first. Who's going to have the first PvP? Will somebody kill Sir Gerard for being just a grouchy bastard? Oh, hey, are we on a break? Yeah. Oh, okay. Until 5.20 Eastern. Oh, that's cool. I just went to go make a cup of tea, so that's okay. Well, that's like, how we well, break. Hungar. Hungar, once again, I know I've said this before, but thank you for the dice, mate. They've made a huge difference. Thank you. Oh, no, it's all good, bro. It's like a honor to buy a player their first set of dice. And how did you know my favorite color was green? Or did you not know and you just guessed? <laughs> I liked them, so I bought them for you. I thought they were cool looking, and I like green. So, I mean, who doesn't like green? Green's always been my favorite color. You know, like when everyone's a kid and all the boys pick blue and all the girls pick pink or whatever. I was just that like, well, one one guy was like, no, nah, I like green. <laughs> See, I'm a weirdo. My favorite color is brown. Everybody's like, how do you like Oh, brown? I'm brown. Hi. <laughs> hey, <how's that? laughs> 
that's why we that's why we've been buddies since the day we met. I'd say that's more to do with who you are as a person, Hungar. You're you're genuinely one of the coolest people I could ever like talk to. I would say that. Barry's even rolling his eyes. But I was taking bets. Who do you think is going to kill Sir Gerard first? <laughs> Me? How dare he speak to my mother like that? Did you hear this film? That's pretty cold. What? Now you tell me, you tell me, what knight would speak against another knight's family? Dude, that was hilarious. At least I didn't buy my way into knighthood. Holy shit, I'm I was say, proud I'm of my just chair. Saying, and if anyone can say that, it's me. Because I'm all, I'm a knight. <laughs> I was born yeah. into it. That was, pre was pretty badass. I've been calling hey, him. I think my character is sort of doesn't say much, but what he does say is quite impactful, or at least that's what I'm trying to do. Well, you seem to be succeeding. I, I've been calling him Sir Merchant. <laughs> oh, no, you called him Sir Rusty. That was funny. That was funny. <laughs> that was a good one. I'll be right back. But seriously, though, what knight would speak against another knight's family? I don't think that's very knightly. No. I mean, regardless well, to, of the racial fair, differences. One, or... one who hasn't been properly trained as a knight? Yeah, he wouldn't have the same etiquette, would he? Yeah. yeah I was about ready to say, for a wizard, he acted very bravely to that. For a wizard? <laughs> Gotta just have that backhand... <laughs> Well, to be fair, he's quite well, smart. Mean, he used lightning bolt on a water beast, so. Well, I mean, it's clear that, you know, Devere is uh, compensating for something. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think John's doing that well, too. Very well. He is. He is very, yeah. Come to find out he actually bought his knighthood like people buy one foot plots of land in Scotland to call themselves Lord. <laughs> yeah, Lord. Yeah, so he's yeah, actually yeah. he's Apparently. actually nothing. It's not even real. It wasn't even it's not even a signed writ or anything. <laughs> just, oh my lord. Apparently that's all not legit. What's that? That whole buying land. Oh no, no, it's not legit at all. Okay. You missed the first half, Mondo. Uh, and for folks out there, oh, I haven't done this recently. Make, make sure I've got... Oh, that's not it. Uh-oh. I do look forward to these monthly sessions, though. It's always a good laugh. I've been pretty bummed out recently, but yesterday, one of the, I was like, I cannot wait to play. <laughs> yeah, I was pretty... I was pretty... I'm pretty happy to be playing, too. I mean, I've got some monster with a grizzly hand on my shoulder, and I'm naked. What am I supposed to do? There's nothing. <laughs> like oh, I'm just nope. Playing. He's got the hood I up. <laughs> uh oh, <laughs> it's cold. I do. I do like the fact that um, those nice shiny new dice that Hungar bought for Imar <laughs> rolling like are, crap. Are rolling? Yeah, ab like absolute garbage. <laughs> well, he's breaking them in. Yeah. Yes. Well, they were pretty nice to me in Call of Cthulhu until I yes, died. They were. <laughs> That's because you want them to roll. You want them to roll low. You want them to roll low in Call of Cthulhu, don't you? And they're rolling lovely and low tonight. Yes. Hungar, are you sure they're not weighted? Oh, he's not there. <laughs> Just so everyone knows, my character has got his two, his ME and MA are both quite high, but his IQ is very low. So I perceive him as being very stuck in his ways. But not very clever, and not very logical. What if I told you so, both you know, of mine are very low? <laughs> yes. So he's uh, he's not he's not applying a lot of logic to these arguments, but he is very. What if, what if I told you Hungar was taking bets on who was going to kill Devere first? <laughs> <laughs> My mental are. How would it make you feel if I said me? <laughs> average. 
Mm. I'm putting I'm putting ten dollars on Laurel. <laughs> So Gerard seems to be making enemies of his companions. It's not a bright bulb. No, I just don't want my compatriots to do anything stupid again. I, I, I it, it, in all truth here, I actually feel bad for Cody, <laughs> and I'm saying Cody <laughs> the player because I, you gotta herd the cats. <laughs> while kind of being the party de facto lead while kind of like so everybody's always looking to you in character and out of character we're just looking at you and it's like i don't know i'd be feeling like what did i do to deserve this <laughs> no i'm actually kind of having fun with it i never get to play the leader of the party so it's oh. kind of it's kind of an interesting challenge to do so you can have it <laughs> yeah i don't know everybody's I back fun. shall we uh start again yes, sir okay all right so you're staring at this town in front of you. Like I said, there's people everywhere. They're doing their things. There's fires or what have you. But I'd like everybody to make a roll 20, a d20 roll, and let me know what you get. 15. 6. 14. 13. 10. 10. 15. Sir. Awful lot of women here. I think. Awful lot of women here. Like as an all? Not as an all, but an awful lot. As you guys are walking into the town, people are looking at you. You also notice oh, the beast. Oh, is who said we're walking into the town? Oh, okay. So as you're standing there <laughs> looking at the town, people at the edge of the town are sort of looking at you and mumbling to themselves. And you notice your beast man is gone. Philip, 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 Philip. What's what's that? What's that? There are lots of girls here. Now remember, just because she plays with your little thingaling doesn't mean you got to marry her. Remember the pool. So, so what do you guys doing? So Devere, I don't have a good feeling about this. There should be no settlements here out in this wild, broken kingdom. Don't you agree? This is a kingdom that does not deserve settlements. This is a kingdom that is, as you say, broken. You have that part of the history correct. Just he because a there's... Of... Sorry, go ahead, Ungar. Just because this place is not well populated, populated does not mean that there can't be old villages that are still viable. You guys always look at the negatives. Well, I hate to say it, Philip, but in this dark, dank, foul place, full of m mysterious things, must one must always be wary, as you have seen. If you haven't learned your lesson by now, I don't know what to tell you. But I recommend we make a wide berth of this village. And So the crowd that has gathered to look at you all is now parting as a group of five armored women are walking towards you. Four pretty much wearing the same armor, one wearing sort of a cloak or a cape type thing signifying rank. Yeah. And uh, they're walking up, and behind them, Ethan, you notice a squad of archers basically just fanning out behind them at the edge of the village, just in case. And well, I'm walking behind whoever's in front of us. Well, you guys are like start... stopped. You're yeah. like I'm, yeah. I'm going, I'm going, remember, I was told to cover the rear, so I'm going to go cover the rear now. <laughs> So the women come walking up to about maybe 30, 40 feet away from you. And the one in the cape goes, who be you? Yes. Um, I kind of look at Sir Devere, you know, give him that be ready for bad things. Kind of like Lauren and Lockwald, wise man. And these are my companions. We are just passing through, good lady. And you are? What brings you here? Just passing through, like I said, just passing through these lands. No one passes through these lands. Well, we are. Seems that we are the first. Have you names? Well, I told you my name. I am Lauren Lockwald. This is the younger Fane, the great Sir Devere. 
the young Sir Ishmatar, Gerhard Bart, and our pleasant friar here as I slap him on the back. Philip. The girl, the boy. Right. This is uh Sir de Vier Squire. And my um I can't I can't ever remember this girl's name. Esmeray? Esmeray. Esmeray. If you wish to enter, you may, but you must surrender all weapons. What do you think, Sir de Vier? I think we give it this place a wide berth, as you suggested the first time round. Walk around the edge and continue along our way. Very well. Well, we will be... Of course, uh, it's dangerous at night, sir. Enjoy your walk. We'll uh, collect your weapons from your bones. Well, they do not seem to mean us any harm, but... I could use a hot mill and a roof over my head. What say the rest of you? I say giving up my weapons is uh, surely an easy way to death. Uh, None but the village guard may walk armed within this township. We're not about to let a squad of strangers march through here as if they were a company of men on their way to do harm. Of Can course. My, quite right. Quite prudent. I, I keep my walking around. stick. She just looks at you, looks at your belly, looks back at your stick and goes, you may keep your stick, but the wizard must let his staff go as well. Of course. Not a problem. If we, if we do wish to stay here, I still haven't heard answers from the rest of the party. I, I want to look around. Bart? Uh, I've got a bad feeling about this. I don't trust Well, them. Their hospitality is, is lacking, sorely lacking. I intend to can just continue on, on, on my way. You, 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 you five should follow. No, I'm with Sir Gerard on this one. I said we go to the village because Sir Gerard says we shouldn't. And I, I want to do it just to spite him. No, no, Philip. Sir Gerard would know best, and I feel the same. Thank you, ladies, for your your invitation, but we will be um, seeking camp elsewhere for the night. And I bow and say, come. And we leave the town, and I start skirting around. As you notice, you notice my respect for Sir Gerard has not changed. Like, I still give him the due respect he's earned, even though we've had a disagreement. As you start walking away, she just yells, Watch out for old oaks. Stay out of toadstool rings. Oh, and uh, don't camp near a willow. Very prudent, and I appreciate it, dear lady. Thank you very much. As you guys walk off into the woods. I look really sad. Yeah. <laughs> We can sneak away and come back. I heard that, and no, there will be no sneaking away. Wait, what were those rules again? We're Just be wary of your surroundings. Don't don't have to worry. There there aren't rules when it comes to magic forest, of fame. Just keep your eyes open and be on guard. There's one rule for a magic forest. It should be avoided at all costs. I think it's too late. I thought you were going to say it should be burned down to the ground. (laughs) If it cannot be avoided, then that is a suitable option. Well, so, Gerard, since you uh, were so keen of us staying here in the middle of the woods at night, um, where should we be staying? You are leading the way, after all. Right, um, I'm being a noble sir. I'm going to use my com- complete lack of uh, of, wild- of wilderness abilities exactly. to try and find a suitable campsite. Exactly. Okay, so you skirt the village to the the west, 
<clears throat> keeping whatever sun you can as it's setting. Um, this forest is thick. Again, I cannot stress enough how thick this forest is. Uh, your horses are not doing well. You're you're finding you're doubling back on yourself. You're you're having to find other angles. And after about an hour, you've gone less than three miles. You you've just you're, you're just getting run over by this forest. But eventually, you find a spot which you think, okay, maybe we could make a fire here. And uh, are you making a fire? What are you doing? Make fire. Give me a roll. Eighty-three. So you guys are starting to think maybe letting Philip make fires is a bad idea since he hasn't successfully done one yet. <laughs> I'm gonna give it a try. <laughs> Seventy-one on a thirty-three. It's not going well. Well, surely Sir De Vere would know how to start a fire. Any good knight or a squire would know how to, right, Sir De Vere? Wait, don't you have magic uh, fire? Can't you go fire? No. And De Vere Apparently. probably wasn't cook oh. anything that or eat anything that was cooked over it anyway. Because... A feigned magic. Magic is not the answer to every riddle. Well, I was just asking a question. Sorry. Peron, show these kind folks how. Uh... How you make a fire, please? Uh, we shall you. We shall you. I, I will make a fire. I will make a fire. <laughs> it's very wet. Very wet. Not not good for fire. Um, I I will try again. I will try again. It's not good. Eighty three and eighty four. <laughs> I'm going to try one more time. Gerard has never made a fire in his life. <laughs> Four. It's too wet to make a fire. I keep telling you guys, but don't I know, listen. but I have to try anyway. I know you have to try. You know what? That smoke sure did smell good. You guys can yeah. smell food, like in the wind. There's like cooking food. Philip, you get a scent of ale. Like there's, oh yeah, there's that stale sort of you know spilt ale smell that normally makes you want to throw up, but right now is making you thirsty. And then, as the sun sets and the moon is rising, it is uh, it's quite full. The moon tonight, and in the distance, you hear the first howl. It's answered from the other side of the valley. You know what, guys? I don't like this area. You don't like where? This area. This area. <laughs> Your beast man shows back up. What are you, you guys just going to camp out there tonight? Oh, my friend, where have you been? Don't like town hmm i don't like everything i'm with kirby i said we get the hell out of here it would seem we are stuck between a rock and a hard place like another rock Stop laughing. <laughs> <Another rock. laughs> no, the rock next to us is a tavern called the Hard Place. Param, find a place, a place, comfortable place, my bedroll, please. We should be as he picks up your bedroll. Another howl, this time closer. Answered, this time closer. I'm climbing a tree. <laughs> okay, I'm straight up okay. climbing a tree. Okay, I want to see the fat fryer climb the tree. Yeah, me too. Okay, you know what? I want to see it too. Hang on, you have climbing skill. I have botany. Do you have climbing skill? I believe was the question I asked. No, no, I do not. <laughs> so you guys watch 
as this robed morbidly <laughs> obese friar <laughs> is trying to climb a tree, but he's just not pulling it off. And as the stress of it all hits you, and you guys feel laughter starting to well up in your bellies, and you're, you're about to have a moment of just cathartic release, you hear the third howl. It's even closer. It's answered. Still closer. There's another answer. Just behind you, close. At this point, I'm drawing both of my knives. Beast man's looking around. He's like, Warn you guys out there in the woods, we have a wizard. I'm ignoring the friar and looking across at Navri and making sure that uh, he is standing there bravely this time. Yeah, and I sort of look at oh. Sergio Gerard and I say, don't look at me like that. I intend to fight. Good. Then come and stand beside me. Improve yourself. Yes. And I draw my sword and I stand with him. The beast man stops. <laughs> Looks at a thane. No, Bacht, because Bacht is the, the one that's his closest friend. Just looks and gives you this look and just goes, run. You hear I a snapping it. in the woods. And you hear this. We need to I, I don't like this. Kirby, let's get the hell out of here. I, no. No, I'll... I'm, the beast man looks at you again, Bach, and he's like, Run. I'm going to head toward the village. As you start moving, there's snapping in the branches. There's noise as you see shadows moving towards you and moving around you in the woods. What are you all doing? I'm running. I'm going Which nowhere. is almost as funny as I'm trying to climb a tree. <laughs> <laughs> what is Lorian, L Laurelin doing? I am sitting on a stump. Not What's saying a word. What's Ethan doing? Ethan. I am scared out of my gourd, but after today's events, I'm going to grudgingly, without saying a word, stand next to Lorlin. Well, What's with Veer doing? Close in that area. I'm standing there, sword and shield at the ready for anything to emerge from the woods. What's Ishmatar doing? I'm standing next to Sir Gerard doing the same. What's Bacht doing? Uh, getting a dodge. So you're going hey, well, doing it. I've... What? You're going after Philip? Yeah. I'm following Who's running? Are you following Philip? Yeah. And although, as I'm leaving, I'm going to go. Sometimes it's better to run away so you can fight another day. Yeah. It's not that casual a situation where you guys just get to quip album covers at each other. You're kind of stressed and, uh, you know, people are kind of nervous. Um, I believe we call it role playing. I don't know. I, I, it's a crazy thing. I know. So, as you start running, Philip, and Box Wing, you know, better to run. In front of you, Philip, out of the woods, steps a very large creature. It's too dark to see any of its features, but you can smell. And it smells musky, skunky, and blood. The camp itself, where you guys are all pairing up and looking around nervously, again without fire, out of the woods step two more and they are big they are big like 10 plus feet they are big fucking creatures and you can see the eye shine as they're looking at you from the moon what are you doing this what you just said was at us well, laurel and myself so I, i'm out Okay, so as you look to, to to the run to the village, you see one in front of Philip and Bach now. Like so, they've 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 encircled you. They're blocking your exit that way. They're blocking your exits this way. The only possible exit you're going to have is deeper into the woods if you run that way. Well, I just run to uh, Bach and, and uh, Philip. So you're moving over towards Bach. Yeah, but I stop with the skid, thinking I could have ran that way, but now I can't. Okay, Devere, Ishmael. 
What are you doing? This I'm wait. I want to see uh, Ishmitar prove himself. Stood beside me. Whatever, whatever, whatever happens. Okay. But, uh... I'm sort of looking at these ten foot tall creatures and thinking. I don't know if we can take them, but it's worth a try. Okay. And I have this like sort of brave face. Okay. The clouds pass over the moon, illuminating the area for a brief moment, and you see them. They look like men with wolf features. Their fangs are inches long. Their snouts snarl, their eyes red, she moonshine, uh, eye shine, making them almost have a glowing feature. They're massive frames. They stink of musk and death. Horror Factor 12, everybody. Oh, come Woo. on. Woo. Man, nothing scares Esmeray. Nothing scares Esmeray. Wait, do I need above or below? Above. Uh, 12 or above. Fuck. <laughs> That's the third time I've got a one. That, I got a one you, also. Use your reroll. You we have rerolls, boys. Don't forget. Mm -hmm. How many do we have? We should have four left. No, three. Three. No, we got four normal rerolls. And plus, everybody except for Cody and Ish has a uh, reroll. I use mine. No, I don't have mine either. So that means right. you have I'm gonna use four rerolls. And Four rerolls, and I think Matt. Yeah, I haven't used. I'm not going to use a reroll. No, Max, no, Max and John are the only two that have their personal. Yeah, left. yeah. So, Cody, what'd you get? Uh, uh, I got a 17. So you're like, you want to make a demon lore on these? See if you can recognize them for what they are. <laughs> yeah, demon lore. Can I use one of the group rerolls? Yes. I like said yes, for the love of God, yes. Oh, much better. 17. <laughs> I do not recognize what they are. Okay, what'd you get, uh, Devere? Did you make your horror save? I I was worried about that one. I got exactly 12, and that's because oh, nice. I had plus one to horror factor. So my honor is intact, just. But not your good family name. All right. No. <laughs> So they're not doing anything. They're just standing there. I wrote a one. Singly. What? I, I wrote a I one. Also. Like... Oh, yeah. No, you're just like, uh, 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 like you're stopped in your tracks. If Thane, you failed as well, right? Yes, correct. Did Bach, you did or didn't? That 20. Okay, so you're like, this place sucks, and it's full of things I hate. Got it. Okay, so... Four of you and Esmeré are, like, not paralyzed with fear. The rest of you are paralyzed with fear. What are you doing, Laurelin? I rise up from the stump and take off my hood and look at Sir Devere. I'm like, Sir Devere, would you like to parlay with these creatures, or should I use a bit of my magic to see what I can do? <laughs> you do what you choose to do. I do what I choose to do. No, that's not how this works. We either stand united, or we all die here, so make a choice. You, who leads your pack? I point at Lachlan. Lachlan. I, I step forward. Oh, God, we're going to die. All right, I let him step forward. I do nothing. Why have you entered our territory? Because the town was not um, up to scratch. Then you um, are a fool. That might be the case. But I'm no coward. Very well. Face me. One. To one. If you win, your pack may go. If you lose, 
<laughs> he throws his head back and he howls at the top of his lungs. And you start hearing echoing howls coming from the woods further away. The two that are right there both howl back right away. These are big, ugly creatures. My sword is drawn. My shield is present, pre presented and ready. I think we're going to go for initiative. Yes. 21. Same. Ooh, simultaneous. I like it. So it doesn't waste any time. It steps in just with its claws and goes straight for the attack on you. Okay. You may try and parry a 16. I may fail to parry a 16. So it's the claws rend into your... That's like right where that fucking gap in your armor is. They rend through on you. Oh, straight to your personal SDC, you take 12 points. Ouch. 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 You're attacked. Uh, a very, very average 14. 11 well, plus 3. It's going to try and dodge it as opposed to because it can't really parry it because it's not wearing armor. You hit. Give me some damage. Don't let me down again, D6. 7. Average. So you hit it, draw some blood as it makes a yelp noise, and then it swings back with its second attack, trying to claw you off to the, with a the backhand. It gets an eight total. Oh. Yeah, uh, parry 19. So, so you yeah. basically swat the arm away with the sword. Your next attack. 15. 15. <laughs> it does not dodge. Bless you. Give me Bless the you. It did not successfully dodge. Nine. So you hit it across the back, and then its leg kicks out at you. And then you see the talons on the leg as well as it comes swinging at you. Twelve. Twenty-two. So you get your shield up, nice. you bash it away, and you've got your last attack. Roll. Seven. It easily ducks under the blade. Next round, initiative. If any of you plan to do anything, let me know because you're being watched very carefully by the other two. Fifteen. You win. Okay. Plus seven. It, it crouches down and it looks at you and it's like, ah, it would seem you've got teeth. And then it shows its yes. fangs and lunges for your throat. It would seem so do you. And they mine are clean. Nineteen. You're like, oh, so oh, do you. Oh. Go, <laughs> like, 22. 22. So you manage to get your shields up and sort of like catch its jaw on your shield and push the head out as it snaps at you. But it was going straight for that throat. Your attack. 18. Right for his guts. 19 before its bonus as you basically go and it just sort of like moves its head out of the way of the sword. <clears throat> Bless you. Excuse me. Thank you. Uh, la, 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 12 as it tries to sort of snap at you again with its jaws. My dice seems to like parrying. That is 18. So basically you manage again to use the shield. You're using the shield to sort of keep its mouth at bay. Your second attack. 14. You hit. Six points. Okay. Its last attack is a nine. Again, as it's snapping at you with its jaw trying to catch you. 14. All right. And your attacks are 14. 14. As basically you, you swing again, and it pulls itself back and it skitters back a foot or two. And it's just like, I will east upon your heart and share your guts with my pack. Initiative. 21. You go first. <laughs> it got five, and that's with a one. 18. You hit. Six points of damage. So you bite into its shoulder. It's going to make a simultaneous attack against you, which means you can't parry. But it can't parry you either on this attack. Oh, what? Okay. 
it hits, that's a 21, and you can't parry it. Is it just with its jaws and clamps onto you? It goes right past the armor. Seven, eight, 11 points of damage. Okay. You can't parry your attack either, so you can go ahead and roll. As long as you get a five or higher, you hit. Ha, 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 my first natural 20 of the night. Ooh, it has to make a save. It does not make the save. You're going to do damage directly to its hit points. Two and three, five points. So as you basically, it bit you good. Like its teeth came in right here on you and got you in the neck or in the, the trapezoid area. But you managed to sort of like get the sword into its side. Is this like, Aah! and you feel blood spurt out on it. Uh, last action for both of you. Go on then. Oh, 19. 20, natural, before we add it. So basically, you're like, you draw the sword back out, you swing, and it ducks underneath. 17. Don't let me down now. No! 11. 11, straight to your SDC. Five, six, seven, eight points more of damage. What's your SDC at? 13. Okay. You're both bleeding as it staggers back a bit. You're both hurt. All of you guys are watching this. They seem fairly even matched, evenly matched. The other two wolf men are looking very concerned. They're like, <laughs> you know, they're glancing and looking. Twenty-one. Thirteen. Initiative. Thirteen. It goes 13. first. Nine. Thirteen again. So you managed to get the shield in the way of that one. Your first attack back on it. Seven. Easily dodged. It's attack. Uh, Thirteen. You got me. You got me. It hits you, but it doesn't go. This is on your armor because you have an AR of 15. Uh, eight points, nine, ten points off your AR on your armor. Off the armor's armor. SDC. That's one in the armor. That's the armor's SDC. It didn't get past your AR rating, so it goes to your armor. Okay. Damage. Your attack, sir. Eight. Boop, broken. <laughs> Dodged easily. And its last attack on you. 20. Not dirty. Not natural. Dirty 20. You got one as well? 17 plus 3. So yeah. basically you managed to get the shield up. At which point, from out of the darkness, you see your beast man drop down on one of the other ones and bite into its neck. Just and rip out as blood spews out. What are the rest of you doing? While they're distracted, I'm going to run. <laughs> I have one attack left. I know, but we're going to get to it. Hang on. What are the rest of you doing? Energy filled. <laughs> okay. I'm safe. Okay. I'm watching the fight. Ishmatar? I'm just watching because I, I appreciate one-on-one -on -one duels. It's a very no, no, it's not a one-on-one -on -one duel anymore. The beast oh, is it now? from your group dropped on one of the other ones and just ripped its throat out with his teeth. Oh, see. Well, there's only one more left, silly, right? um, You guys wouldn't let him have his honor fight, so Ooh. fuck your honor fight type of <laughs> what he's got going on right now. Okay. Are you guys there's using only one left, right? Moment? Well, no, because the big one that he just tore their throat out is still alive. It's just hurt badly. Hungar runs. Uh, Philip runs. <laughs> he's running through the dark woods. <laughs> what is Bach doing? Muted. Muted. I'm going to attack the one in front of me. So that would be the injured one. Go ahead and roll the hit, please. Six. That still hits. It's a surprise attack. It didn't even see it coming. Ten damage. So with the damage that the bear that the, the beast man did to it, you basically take your 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 bastard sword with two hands and you cleave through its midsection, cutting it in half almost in the mid, like you cut through half of its midsection, its entrails just pour out onto the ground, steaming as it drops to its knees and falls dead. Ishmatar, there is the one that Devere is fighting, and there is a second one. What are you doing? 
Um, I'm going to assist Devere because it seems they're quite evenly matched. So maybe I need he. Uh, I'll help him tilt the balance in our favor. No. No, no. He he can play his own character. Let him do what he wants. You and your fucking pride, Sir Devere. <laughs> If you guys want to find me, just follow the string of, stream of pee. Well, and, and, I'm yeah, no, and, and broken branches because you're leaving a path. <laughs> and, and, and poo. The smell of poo. <laughs> uh, I, I wrote a one. I'm terrified. No, oh, yeah. So which one are you attacking, Ishmatar? Yeah, I'm going to help Sir Devere because I feel like power in numbers and then we can gang up on the last one left. Okay. Roll to hit, please. What am I rolling? A d20. Yes. And then which one am I plussing? Your attack, your strike bonus. Okay, that's plus one. So that is a 13 plus one, 14. Okay, well, it's engaged in combat, so it has a chance to parry. It does, leaving it wide open for your shot, Devere, with no parries left. Oh, well... That's 11, so... Oh, that hits. Give me some damage. Another 5. My D6 is crap tonight. How much damage have you done in total, since I know you like keeping track of that? I haven't. Oh, okay. (laughs) Well, you hit it. It's not dead, but you definitely have hit it. It is bleeding hard. The other one turns and runs into the forest. Not after me, right? No, no, it's it's heading into the woods. Back off, Navri. This is my fight. Initiative, boys. It gets a 13. 22, 23, sorry. 20, I've got plus 4 for initiative. Locked. 12. Ishmatar. 5. Kirby. 8. Lockwald. 6. All right, you're up first, Devere. I got a 20, so I run fast. Okay, you run faster. You, uh, 15. <laughs> what? 15. 15. 15? That hit. Oh, it gets it. Can actually, it has a parry available to it. Let's see what happens. Uh, two. No. <laughs> Four and five. Nine points of damage. As you basically plunge your sword up into its torso and you feel it hit like the sternum, and then you feel the break as it pushes through into the heart. And this thing goes. <gasps> As hot blood pours down the blade, coating your hand. It's dead. And then you hear the howls in the distance as the one that ran away is making the call. We better move. What are you doing? I call him back up. We barely I stand there, arms crossed with my staff in my hand, energy field glowing around me. Well, so Devia, yeah, what, what shall we do? Didn't we, we win? Off. Yes, we won. For now. I know. You can hear the howls echoing through the trees as they're calling and answering. Move. Can Move. we go to the village, please? We're going to have to. Hungar, Philip, <laughs> you run and run and run all the way to where the village is, getting to its gate, which is closed for the night. I start knocking on the gate. Let me in, please. I don't even know those assholes. A little window opens up, and this, this woman looks at you and she goes, It's after time. No one comes in now. I will pay you. Doesn't matter. Rules are rules. Please help me. (laughs) Give me a roll under your MA, please. 17. Luckily, I got a 21. Nice. Go around the side. Yeah, I go around the side. And there's like a like a, a merchant store, and she opens your clack, 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 and then she opens it. She's like, quickly, quickly, before someone sees, quickly. I, I come in really quick. It closes it, and starts locking it up. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Just sit here. Don't move. Don't say anything. Don't let anyone see you. I'll be in so much trouble. 
Ah. Wolf people. Yes, yes, yes. The wolfen run these woods. The wolfen live here. This is their lands. The lady tried to tell you. She tried to tell you all not to go into the woods, but you had to be arrogant men because that's I wanted what men to are. stay arrogant. I wanted to stay, but the fancy knight who was doing all the talking said that we couldn't. Then you're a because fool for letting the fancy knight decide your fate. I told him that we should not listen to that guy. He is a jerk. Then why do if you they, listen to him? Are you damaged? If, are you were you kicked in the head by a mule? You gotta go with you know our companions. But if they come are back, I wouldn't let, I wouldn't let that guy in the town ever. He will do nothing but cause trouble. He will pick fights with everybody in this town. Everybody else is really nice, but he is an asshole. So that, the howls are getting you can you even you can hear them in the town. The howls are going everywhere, and now you guys are. What are you doing? What's what did Devere? You said what's the plan, Devere? What did Devere decide to do for everybody? To try and find our way back to the road. But the town did not accept our ways. So th th there's no road. We're the looking, road we're look, led we're to the town. There's no road. The, the, the road. The road must continue past the town. Yeah, but you got to get around do. the town, and that's not working out. For, okay. Gonna watch Devere walk you all into death. <laughs> this will be fun. Don't worry, everybody. I'll be okay. <laughs> He's not bright. I keep saying that. I know. What's Ethan doing? Okay. What's Ethan doing? I I'm confused. Okay. What's I'm Bach doing? I'm grabbing Ethan and heading toward the town. You heading to the town? Yeah. Okay. What's Ishmatar doing? I sort of look at the dead bodies, listen to the howls and think the best thing to do is go towards the town and sort of turn towards that direction. Okay, you now hear a bell ringing in the town. Esmeré looks at you, Lockwald, and just sort of gives you this look like, you're going to get us killed, but she's just like, do we stay or do we go? Oh, that's up to the noble Sir de Vere. He's the leader now, didn't you hear? <laughs> he knows what? She looks at you and she goes... Huh. And you've never seen passion in her eyes or energy. Like, she's been so calm. And she just touches the white lock on her head. And she goes, I have given enough for you all. I will not give my life for you in stupid, stupid contest of ego. You are the wise man. You lead the Pendrick cycle, not the night commander. Make a decision and I follow it. If your decision is to stand here and wait for him to decide, then I wash my hands of you. Um. Trouble. Well, I would say it's sure death to stay here in the wilderness surrounded by wild packs of demon wolves, wouldn't you say, Sir Devere? So I think we should seek the shelter of the town. Perrin is literally pulling a ride or die face beside you, but his eyes are just like saucer shaped, and he's like just staring at Devere like in total terror, but you know he's not going to abandon you. Stand there stoically for a moment and then think to myself, Perrin's life depends on my choice as well. Goes against my beliefs. But once again, I feel as though I have proven myself tonight. But yes, the town is. Esmeray just... slaps you so hard across the face, like you like it hurts. And she goes, Enough of your words! And she walks off towards the town. Peasant girl. <laughs> <laughs> so Esmeray is going straight girl. to the town. She's not even stopping. She's going straight to the town. I look at Peasant the Peasant girl? Of She's not answering. She's not responding I just, to you. I just shake my head at Devere, kind of give him this look like, you fucked hard. And just and just start walking and just start quickly following behind Esmeray and looking at the rest of them. Well, we don't have any time to spare. Let's go. But uh, parents like uh, we go with them, Perrin. We go with them. Okay. And he grabs the reins of the horses and starts trying to pull the horses. The horses are not moving. They're frozen with fear. You can see their eyes are wild. They're like, they can smell the blood all around them. And like, your horse is a war horse. It's not freaked by the blood. The pack horses are freaked. 
and they're getting like <clears throat> and they're trying to rear up and they're trying to, to do all of that okay i've got to try and um try and calm them down and try and get them on their way so um i do have quite a good horsemanship ability all right um, give it a roll come on dice do not let me down 34 that is i believe a pass for most things i don't have all the ins and outs of horse my guess is level. you're better than mine and mine that would that would work for me I, I'm, I'm night level horsemanship. Yeah, then so. you're better than him. So, okay, so you managed to like yeah. get the horses moving in that direction just as you hear the branches breaking as more of these things are coming out of the woods. The rest of you have gotten to the gate, which is closed. There is a bell ringing inside the town, um, and you can hear growling <coughs> and howling coming towards you. What are you doing? I g gently knock on the, the, uh, the door of my staff. Are you planning to cast a spell that does something to the door? Because gently knocking ain't going to do shit. There's bells ringing in chaos. I start pounding a little harder. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Slot on the door. <laughs> Thane just runs up his double fist in the door. Got it. Slot opens up and this woman's like, go away. Come this close for the night. Let them in. They're with me. Come around to the side, guys. Come around to the no, side. No, go away. You're not allowed in. I think we I can start... help you. It seems that this whole area is under attack, and um, we could probably aid you. Above you, on the wall, you hear a female voice go, Oh, so the woods wasn't to your liking after all, then? No! Is the night with them? Like a line of archers with her. Where's the arrogant knight? Probably getting himself killed back in the woods. More's the pity. Let them in. Ma'am, I said let them in. Thank you! So, Don't let the knight in. He's an asshole. The door opens up, and you guys rush in. As you see, Devere and Perrin come charging around the corner, pulling these horses with them. As a large wolf creature drops on one of the backpack horses and just starts rending it to shit. The screams of the horse causes the other horses to lose panic, including your own. Go ahead and try and make a horse horsemanship roll, Devere, with a penalty of 20 because they Ooh. are being attacked. 67, that's going to be a file. All the horses, including your own, bolt for open land as you see wolf creatures come dropping out of the woods and grabbing all your pack horses are including gone. mine yes including yours shut the door you shut see your door. horse running into the darkness and you don't know what becomes of it as the the the, 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 the archers are now shooting at the wolf people just like get them in here and close the doors so parents like looking at you like trying to run for the gate but not sure if he should move we go i start yeah, pushing yeah. the gate shut oh my god stop your nonsense you're not pushing the there's a gate crew there hungar <laughs> so <laughs> basically you guys get yanked inside as they slam the gates closed you hear the howls going up and you hear the the cries of the horses as they're being torn to pieces and then you find yourself being surrounded by a lot of soldier ladies and the captain comes walking down I throw my knives on the ground. <laughs> she looks at Devere. I look down at my locket. Look at the picture of Lady Jelaine in there. Close my locket. And place my sword on the ground. Wise choice, sir. The rest of you, drop your weapons now. Including your walking stick, fat man. I drop my walking stick. I'll Is take my sword and I'll place it gently on the ground. Is there a place I can lean my bow so that it's not just being trampled on? Well, you can put it on the pile of weapons. I mean, you know, it's not going to get trampled on in the middle. So, you know, like everybody's putting all their stuff in one pile, right? So you can put it on the top without worry about it. Okay. You are seized by the guards. You are stripped of any armor you have. Your pockets are emptied. All of your personal stuff is taken from you. Sweet and you are thrown into what would be the equivalent of a dungeon, except it's more like an Old West prison, like a jailhouse type thing. They don't have dungeons here. The only one who isn't is Esmeralda. 
I look at Philip or at Kirby, and I'm like, little do they know, I like. You like what? I like. Uh, something you, you're you're seriously breaking up, like you're yeah. not able to finish. Is this better? Oh yeah. I said a little of these women now. I like this kind of stuff. He likes this kind of stuff. Oh, dear God. After you're all settled down, the captain comes in. She looks at you, Devere, and she goes, You need healing. I, uh, yes. A little. Well, if you survive the night, you'll have it. But in the morning, you face the goddess, and she will decide your fate. Arrogant men. And they walk out, leaving you in those cells. Are we in each, each in our like own individual cell? Oh no, no, no! It's a nice like big a group cell, group holding cell, so you can really put fingers around each other's throats if needed. Okay. Me and Kirby told you we should have came into this village. You arrogant son of a bitch! I take no orders from peasants. If I want, if I want, need anything from you, I ask you about clothing, Sir Rusty. Watch your time. Your armor sucks. How that may start you now? That guy Watch was not lying. And I go over to the corner and lay down. You ran, you coward. Lauren Lynn is just sitting in the corner with his hood drawn, just like this, just completely <laughs> silent. Just completely fed up yeah. with this situation. Hasn't said a word. Navri's just sort of looking down at himself, thinking how weird he looks without armor on. <laughs> if, uh, if, and safe. <laughs> if nothing much is going on at some point during where we're all contemplating, thinking, hating each other, and so forth. I'm going over to Laurelin. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Sorry for what? There's nothing to be sorry for. I'm the one that should be sorry. I brought you to this accursed place, and I don't know the reason why. I don't even know what I'm doing here. I'm completely out of my league. Well, if you don't know, and we're following you, and I don't know why you are following me. You should just leave me here to rot in this dungeon. Well, looks like we'll have a day to think about that. I I hate this place. And I just turn around and walk away, and I, I go to, De, well, whoever's closer, uh, either Navri or Devere. Navri. Okay. Basically, same thing. Sorry for yelling at you earlier. It's okay, Thane. Not a problem. I understand you just want to keep the group like together as a unit, and you know it's been a bit fractious lately. So I appreciate you don't it. Ha you I'm don't sorry have as well. This lordship nonsense where I'm from, and I'm still getting used to it. I'm trying to give you your respect, but I don't, I don't, I don't know how to do that apparently. But that's okay. I'm just saying sorry. I accept sorry. your apology, and I extend mine too. And uh, finally, uh, over to Devere. Yes. You haven't heard. I've already did it with them. Now, sorry for yelling at you. Apology accepted. It's all frustrating. I don't want to be here. I don't know why I'm here. But we we have to we have to work together, and I don't know how to do that. You might be right. I mean. It does seem occasionally we get moments of wisdom from your 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 peasant breeding. 
I'm guessing you learn these things in, in your society. My upbringing has been clearly different to the rest of yours. Well, I have that's... to question myself sometimes. Okay. But your apology go... is accepted. I'm going to go after that. Just I said what I needed to say, and I don't know how to deal with the rest of this, so I'm sitting down. Fair. Well, unless anybody's doing anything else, you're eventually just going to uh, pass the night. And uh, I'm going to need a uh, roll under your PE, uh, Sir Devere, because you are pretty banged up. Roll under. Six. Right. PE 11. No fever. No infection. And if no one does anything else, you pass the night in the cells. Get what little sleep you can. Probably a whimper or two coming from me. I try to hide it, though. All right. In the morning, the captain returns with the guards. And um, what would be best described as vestal virgin-looking women, basically? You know, they have the air of priestesses about them. And uh, they come into the cell, and uh, they start administering anyone who needs any healing is going to get some medical attention. I think Ooh. that's really just uh, Devere at this point, or is Kirby still hurting? Kirby's still hurt. Okay. So they do stuff, and some of it is bombs and solves, and you can hear them chanting as they're doing it. So it's up to Devere if he's going to shy them away. Yeah, yeah, I, I probably will. Well, Kirby, you get 16 SDC back. I can't fall. Oh, I, I need some of that. You, how much damage did you take? I took five SDC. You get 11 SDC back. Yeah, I took five SDC as well. You get more than that back. You get uh, 12 back, so you're good. Devere gets Oh, nothing. awesome. Oh, wait, you got a little bit of the healing solves. You get four back for that. Four. Four. With that, the captain goes, very well, let's go. The goddess awaits. <laughs> and as they march you through the town towards what looks like the central keep place, you now notice the women are clearly in charge here as the men are all keeping their heads down. Many of them are chained. Uh, this is this is this is a matriarchal society by every stretch of the imagination, and uh, they lead you. What? What? As we're walking through the town, I'm all happy, you know, waving at all the women and people saying, "Hey, how you doing?" Nice you get a spear butt to the back of the knees that drops you to the ground. Mind your business. Walk along. This is my business. Speak again, and you'll face the goddess without a tongue. You're led to the main building. There are more guards now. They walk you into the main building. As you step into the main building, they put shackles and manacles on each of you. Is anybody fighting them or stopping or trying to prevent it? No. <laughs> Box just like, here we go again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's poor life in shackles. The main room looks like it would have been maybe uh, some sort of throne room or mayor's audience chamber or something like that. And there are tons of women standing around. And like it's almost like the galleries are full seeing what's going to happen. It's deadly silent as out of the back area comes a curtain is parted and this tall, blonde, Amazon of a woman, like just, you know, she looks like she can handle herself, comes walking out with a retinue of guards, and uh, men go on their, like, plank style on the ground in front of her as she steps up on their backs and then onto her throne, sits down, crosses her legs, and goes, we have spent the night speaking with the one called Esmeray. She has told us of your quest. She has told us who you are. Oh. 
Laurel and Lockwald, speak to us. What would you have us to spare your lives and let you continue this quest and not enslave you? Uh, I kind of sigh and walk forward. Well, our lives are in your hands, clearly. You know what we are about and where we are going. And surely you know that our quest is imperative to everyone in these lands, not just individual fews. And if we do not go through with what we are about to do, we could all be in dire peril and doom. We are the goddess. We protect our people. Not our very well power keeps us safe. You are outsiders. You are chaos. All men are chaos. We will not suffer free men here. This one, she looks at Devere. In his eyes, it is clear he will not be broken. He will be killed. This one, she looks at Philip, fat and old, of no use, perhaps sacrificed. The young ones have potential. We have been told you are a wizard, Laurel and Lockwald. Be this true? This is true. I am a wizard, a sorcerer, a soothsayer, as they say in some parts. Though soothsayer would not be true, I don't think. Not completely accurate. We desire much your blood, your power. You will give it to us this evening. And what does that mean exactly? You're going to slit my throat and drink my blood? No, fool. You will fill our stomach with a child of magic so that we will carry it forward for female kind. And then you and yours will be taken to the far end of the village and put out, never to return. I'm very wise. Hit him. <laughs> and one of the women just walks over and full, like just open palm slaps Philip as like it echoes how hard she hits him. It will not speak until it is given permission to speak. Accept you this arrangement, Laurel and Lockwald. This compromise seems very fair, and I'm more than willing to accept it. Fail at this task, and you will all be put to the sword. Use your magics, boy. I'm afraid this is beyond my magic, but I shall prove my best, or do my best. She stands up, men drop, she walks down their backs and leaves. They gather you all up and take you to a different set of rooms. These are nicer. Laurelin is taken away from you. The rest of you are all put in one big room that has, like, it's almost like the equivalent of what they would think a man harem room would be like. So there's like comfortable seats, you know, food, drink, that kind of stuff. Arcade machines. What? Arcade machines. A big no. no, no. <laughs> Philip lays down on like the chase of like Philip equals love, ladies. <clears throat> Laurelin, on the other hand, is taken by the priestesses, bathed, anointed, decorated. Like, they just spend hours preparing him for his night. 
What are the other five doing while waiting in their fate? What, what do you think, what do you think they're going to do to him? Uh, why do you like them to be to you, young Kirby? Wait, what? And, and have you ever been to a farm? Yeah. You know when sometimes they bring in like a stud bull? Or horse. Oh, that kind of magic. Yeah. They want him to show. Why magic. can't I go? I've wondered the same thing. Why were we like, I mean, I could understand why they wouldn't want Sir Rusty over here, but the rest of us. You guys I'm going to learn magic. learn magic. Well, I'm going to learn. <laughs> I would not cavort with such peasants anyway. But you already do. I do not. Not that sort of cavorting. Okay. I don't know what that means, but how many different types of peasants are there? One. Okay, well then you already do. You keep You're calling right. us peasants and they're peasants. So what type of peasants do we have to be? You're I said either. cavort. I would not cavort with you either. You're either a peasant or a cloth merchant. There's no in between. <laughs> Philip, what is what is a cavort? Um, what he likes to do with his horse. What Sir Gerard likes to do with his horse. <laughs> Russian? Yeah. I... And, uh, and, and as a man would brush of woman. Oh. So, oh. So Laurelin is cavorting. <laughs> yes. The door opens as Murray comes in. That's great. Slap him again. We have to get him out of here. But he's cavorting. And then they're going to kill him. <laughs> Once he has finished the deed, they are going to sacrifice him to their moon goddess. You all get to live. He dies. How do how do we how do we do it? So she hands hung, uh, she hands Philip a, a honey cake, <laughs> and then she gives each of you like some bread. And when she gets to you, Ethan, she gives you bread, and then with her other hand, she slips you a dagger. Uh, it, am I wearing enough clothes to be able to palm it? Yep. Okay. Yep. The only thing they took from you is your armor. Your armor and gear. Okay. Like you have your underclothes, basically. I, I give her a quick smile and... Figure it out. When the moon reaches its zenith, he dies. I'll be waiting. And she walks back to the door, knocks, and they open it, and she leaves. I eat my honey cake. Can't hear you, Hunger. Sorry, we, I can't hear you. I eat my honey cake. Okay. <coughs> um. Uh, oh, what's your name? I'm looking at Bach. Bach. Oh, uh, can. Can you get us out of here? I have. I couldn't get myself out of the jail without any help earlier. Uh, what? We're good. Anybody got any ideas? Um, oh, ha, ha, this I know is a that... This is a closed room, correct? Yep. There's not no bars or anything that in a normal everyday common garden variety door. There's an everyday Norman co normal common variety door, and there are bars on the windows. Okay, and what, what I mean by that, I'm not uh, looking to. I'm just saying like this isn't anything unusual. We're not in, you know. Okay. Uh, Navri has pick locks. If that helps. Wait, what? You can? Are you a thief? No. This is one of the things that they teach us in knighthood if we ever get captured. I'm going to be a knight. You hear a gong somewhere in the distance. How long will it take you? 
Uh, I'm not sure. It depends on what type of lock it is. And I'll just sort of go and have a look and see if I can sort of enable it. Well, you need something to pick that lock with. Yeah. Does anybody have any um, small metal objects? Sure, like a buckle on my shoe or... A long, thin, pointy knife. Was it that? Okay. Yeah. My knives weren't that she long, thin, she pointy. She took it from the kitchen, man. She didn't go okay. to the armory to get it, right? I... Okay, I unpalm it. Will this help? Oh, where did you get that from? You know what? It doesn't matter. Thank you. I'll take that. <laughs> Laurel, you were brought back into a chamber where the goddess is lounging luxuriously on her bed of pillows and all that type of thing. There's veils of silk and what have you. And I don't want are... the details. I'm good. Oh, no, no, no. You're getting the details. <laughs> there are braziers burning, you know, incense centers being swung by these priestesses who have surrounded the area and are all praying and praying and praying. And they, they bring you in trussed up like a like a brood stud um you know poor poor laurelin with his cloak and his feathers is down to a loincloth and his skinny rick ocasek body as basically <laughs> as they bring you up to the bed and she's like come you will fulfill this as the moon climaxes and we'll fade back to the home picking a lock man i hope he doesn't get performance Right, so I've got a plus forty on pick lock, so, so do I roll a percentile and you're trying to roll under wait, wait, forty wait, or wait, less hey, on a percentile. Don't do this now. But you, stop shh, stop. You hear another gong in the distance and then you hear like chanting echoing through the building. Hold oh, hold on, hold on. Do it, do it. Wait, you don't want you don't do want it, me to what? do this right now. What, yeah, what are we gonna do now. if you open it? That's a good He's point, sneaky. but what are we gonna do by staying here? Can we? Should we maybe form some sort of plan before I try that's and take what, this lock? Yes, that's what I was thinking. Yes. <laughs> okay. Right. So I'll look through the keyhole and I'll try and see like what I can see on the other side of this door. Yeah, that looks like a chick's ass. <laughs> <laughs> he just stays looking. Yeah, I just carry on looking and go, dang. He stays looking and all you hear is <laughs> against the door. You know. Why is he breathing so heavily? I got a thing. Get a look at this. <laughs> oh, did you actually do that? Yeah. yeah. Are you, uh, well, I'll look then. Like, what? Oh, hey. So, what are we gonna do? It looks like actually at this point. At this point, door. I'm looking at Philip. I'm seriously just looking at Philip. What do we do? We open the lock. We grab the key. If there's somebody standing guard, we grab them. We pull them in here and incapacitate. Yeah, we'll capacitate people. To fear. <laughs> we'll capacitate <laughs> people. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't try not to laugh. Devere, can you do that passitation? Yes. <laughs> oh. you you. So I'm good the plan. only one with the weapon, though, Sorry. that I got from the thing. Good, good plan, Philip. Open the door. All right. So then you hear I'll another gong, and, and then you hear like someone calling, "All to the temple! All to the temple!" And as you hear, you hear noises outside as people are walking by the door. Oh my god! I got it. Wait, hang on. Double zero and nine. Oh no! That means you got a nine. Nice. You got a nine. You succeeded. Oh yeah. not Oh uh, Let's nine. Go okay. in. <laughs> So he, he gets to working. It takes him about 10 minutes, maybe, and being really like, you know, you know, trying not to alert the, the guard outside the door. But eventually you feel the of the lock giving way. I think I got it. Don't open it. Yet. Don't Don't open open it. Look first. Yeah, look out the keyhole. Double hole. check. It was just a So I look through the keyhole again. Still some guard's ass. Okay. 
Does it look like a fine ass? No, I'm, I'm joking. You, uh, okay, looking, that's you, still you, the you, same you, person. Hang on. As you're looking, you hear a voice go, go to the temple, God. I've got this. And you recognize the voice of the captain. Ma'am, you heard me. Go. Y yes, ma'am. And then you hear some fumbling with a key and a bit of a jingle jangle. And you get a smell in the air, Navri, from where you're sort of, you know, like not sure what to do because someone's fucking with the door and there's now a key in the hole. But the smell that hits you is that same smell Philip had the day after his drinking binge. It's like this smell that you've been noticing amongst all these people that drink, that they... The they, stale they start, ale they, smell. They, no, it, well, it's, it's, some, it's this, this scent they have that, you know, they're... The more they drink, the more they tend to sweat this particular odor. Oh, ah, okay, yeah. And uh, you hear the click in the thing. What do you do? Um, I palm the dagger away, away, and I sort of step out of the way of the door okay. and act like I wasn't doing anything. So you step out of the way. The door opens, and the captain comes in a bit drunk and staggers, and she looks around. She goes, where's that arrogant knight? I will You're step muted. forward and say... You're yeah. muted, Hunger. No, he wasn't, but we can't hear him for some reason. Yeah, we can't hear you, man. Yeah. I will step forward um, and say, I, I assume it is me you are speaking of. Mm-hmm. And she puts her hand on the pommel of her sword, and she goes, I don't think it's right that only the goddess shall have what she wants tonight. Come, come with no. me, boy. No. And she starts drawing the sword. Come with me, or I'll kill you where you stand. I am taken. You're about to be. And she draws the sword. All right. She is going to kill Devere. And she's drunk. What are you all doing? Uh, I'm gonna. If can we attack? Are we at that? Okay. You uh, Remember, uh, you're attacking someone armed, and you're it, unarmed. Uh, that's fine. Um, stop it. I'm going. <laughs> damn cat. Uh, no, I'm. I'm. Go I'm going. Honestly, I'm going for the knees. I'm going for a knockdown attack. Okay. Can't hear you, hunger. We put your headset back yeah. on, dude. We'll just we'll deal with it that way. Bach, what are you doing? Um. I'm going to let Kirby go and see what, how his plan works out. <laughs> see if Kirby dies first, and then we'll take it from there. <laughs> well, no, he's got a good idea. Navari, what are you doing? Did Iman just leave? No, sorry. I'm here. She's pretty much going to have her back to you when she turns to face Devere, by the way. She's still looking at Devere at the moment. Yes. And what did the thing say he was doing? Well, you don't know what he's doing. What are you doing? Well, I've still got the dagger palmed, and I sort of think, oh, maybe this would be a good chance to get a sneak attack. Okay. You're a knight. Attacking someone from behind is without honor. Yeah. Yes. Think. You have a knife. She has her back to you. She's drunk. Yeah. Anyone want to help him out on this one? Sh shall I pantomime it for the, the, the you? Flat, the flat end of the blade? Knock, knock oh, her out. Well, okay. oh. Do you guys know where anything in this building is? No. So what are you going to do when you escape? Run around like the keystone? Like every good set of adventures, figure it out when we get there. <laughs> okay. Oh, God. Do what you got to do. What are you doing? All right. Initiative. No. Let's go. Come on, baby. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. She actually gets an 18. Nine. I'm not going with y'all. I'm looking for 16. 16. 16. Ishmatar. Three. Bokht. 16. Hungar. We still can't hear you, brother. I, I lip read 17. 17? Was that what you got? Was it 17? Okay. That's really weird. Okay, go out and come back in and see if that resets your audio. She's 
she got a pretty high initiative for being drunk. <laughs> yeah, she rolled it. She rolled really well. <laughs> she must be one of those really aware drunks. The ones that get hyper aware. I, I drive better when I'm drunk, I promise. Yeah, she's, she's got a little Dr. Johnny fever going on. Her reflexes get faster the drunker she gets. Hungar? Can you hear me? Yes, yes we can. Finally. Yes. Okay. What'd you get? 16? Awesome. 17? 17. 17. Okay. So she's going to go first. And she's going, because no one beat 18, right? Nope. Mm -mm. And she's going to try and stab Devere. Are you going to dodge? Absolutely attempt to dodge. Well, she gets grand total with her penalty of six. Oh. Eleven. You dodge. Philip, what do you do on 17? I grab her from behind. Like, no, you're, to, you're, you're not behind her, so you're going to have to grab her from the side. I grab her from the side. Bear hug. Uh, Go ahead and try and make a grapple attack on her. 15, I have basic hand to hand, so 17. She's she you sort of grab her arm and she's like, What unhand me? Uh 17, anybody on 16? 16. What are you doing? I'm um, using hand to hand martial arts, going down, just trying to scissor, scissor kick her legs, get okay, her to fall. Go ahead and roll, please. Come on, baby, 10 plus four. Five, nope, plus three, 13. You do. You kick the back of her legs with a scissor kick as she falls. Navari, she's falling towards you. What do you do? Oh, well, I don't know if I want to kill her, but I do have Hunter and Expert, so I'll try and, like, sort of grapple her they and subdue her. Throat. Okay. Roll. D20. Yes, sir. Skills are percentiles. Four. Everything else is D20. Four doesn't even succeed. So yeah, you, you're like, oh, uh, this is all getting chaos and she falls on the floor. Box, what are you doing? That sword arm of hers is there. I'm going to grab her sword arm. Try to grab yeah. her sword arm. All right, make a roll, sir. This will be a regular attack for a disarm. Six. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, my fuck. <laughs> She got a three. <laughs> nice. Like dive over and sort of struggle with her for a bit and then pull the sword out of her hand. Then what do you guys do? Surrender. It is is hung throat. Hungar's up, right? Oh, he's, yeah. He went. He's got her in an arm lock on one side. You've got her flat on the ground. And now Bacht has her, her sword. Uh, the Veer is standing there. And uh, Ishmatar's like, because uh, uh, there's just <laughs> chaos happening in front of him. And she looks at Bacht with the sword and she's like, fine, I surrender. If you wanted somebody, you should have went for the young kid. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Where have they taken our weapons? <laughs> this is the problem with men. You have no loyalty to each other. You're more concerned about your weapons than your friend. Now we, we need intend to free our friend. We will do a better job of it with our weapons. Yeah, I want to know where he's cavorting because I want to cavort. <laughs> You're disgusting. And she tries to kick you in the face with her foot. I'll dodge. She gets a 12. Uh, 10 plus 3, 13. She's like, what? As her foot sort of comes up towards you. Yeah, pig. I tighten the arm part. Ah, okay, all right. I'll take you to him. Pull me off this floor. It's cold. Don't let go. Don't let go. Ah, oh, don't let go. Philip and Navari so help her up. So, Navari, are you helping her up? Yeah. So you guys pull her to her feet, and she's like, "Let's go. Come on." And then she glances back at Devere and she's like, your loss. As you drag her out into the hall and she starts guiding you down the hall. Are As you I already said, I have a word. I am, I, I am promised to a worthy woman. Do you just love the sound of your voice? Is that what it is? Because you just talk yes. and talk and talk. Yes, he does. He does. My God. I told you not to let him in. My voice I am is going warm. to take a look at 
where she's look where she's leading us, like how she's looking. Okay, give me and uh, my my goal here is I kind of want to be ahead of her, but I because I don't want her walking us right into oh look we're in another jail cell. Uh, what do you want me to roll? Uh, give me IQ. <laughs> <laughs> nope, not even close. Missed it by ten. Yeah, it looks, well, you've got a reroll available to you if you want one. You know what? And this, I will use it for this one. Of course, I still have a less than fifty percent chance. <laughs> Missed it by eleven. Jesus Christ! You can I? Can I? You're going the right way. Are, are you no leading way. us? Everything's great. Are you, are you leading us the right way? And I like wrench up on the arm bar a little bit. <sighs> I'm going to reach my other arm up, pull your testicles off, and shove them down your throat. If you do that again, no, you're not. Right? You'll like it. <laughs> <laughs> the words of Bach. You know why you are the stupidest creatures on this world? Because God gave us enough uh, blood to work our brain or our penis, but not both. What? Is that true? <laughs> you wanted to marry the first girl you lied with. She sighs and then screams guards at the top of her lungs. Hand right over her mouth. Yeah, what's your PP? My PP is about 14 at no, 14. Yeah, well, let's see who rolls better. She got a three. I got a two. Mm, show me, show me. <laughs> I don't believe you because yeah, yeah, I could do that. I will reroll. I will reroll it if you don't well, believe worst me. Worst of all. Okay, the second time I rolled, I got a sixteen. There you go. So she screamed. I'm going to use my reroll. You just use your reroll. <laughs> no, I didn't use a reroll. Max used a reroll. We still got three rerolls. Go ahead. There you go. Now I believe you. It was oh. meant to be. Oh, okay, princess. Okay, Sarah, Sarah. So you cover her mouth and she goes, Grr! Now what are you guys doing? If you try that again, I will have them cut your throat. She just looks at you like with this look that's like whoopee shit. She's so drunk she doesn't care. Can we find something to gag her with? Oh. She wanted idea. you to gag. She wanted you to gag her, but you turned her down. <sighs> We're all maybe do a two for one, Sergeant. <laughs> so as you guys are standing around in a corridor of the enemies, keep talking and making jokes at each oh, other. They're talking. I'm gonna make a little check to see if anybody just happens to wander by while you guys do the comedy routine. Oh, you're good so far. What are you doing? I'm still trying to look around. Okay. Take us to our friend. Take us to our friend now. She just stands. Do we not need our weapons first? Do we have We're, time? Are there labels on these doors, on the corridors? Are there, I mean, is there anything? Not really. Everybody not. walked a certain direction. I don't know exactly what happened after they passed the door, but Wait. I kind of know what direction they walked in, right? Okay, so as you scout that way, you do see a large set of double doors, which you're pretty sure must be leading to that temple. Yeah, the problem is, is that's probably where everybody's standing. They're not going to be too cool with us being there. Who's got the sword? Bocked. And I've got the dagger, and that's all. That's yes. are, there any, are there any weapons mounted on the walls anywhere? Anything like that? No, it's not a goddamn Diablo uh, dungeon. <laughs> I just thought there might be, there might, be some, there might be some swords or axes to spray. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Random yeah. catapults and trebuchets lying no, about the no. place. No, you might, you might, you might have Tooth antique of armor of the right size. I try to choke her out, but they're in a sleeper hold. Pretty easy to do when you have her. You choke her out and knock her out onto the floor. Right, I'm I'm running forward. Uh, is there another hallway or something? That looks like it wraps around that. You know, so there's double the doors there. Is basically this place is based on a cross corridor. Okay. At one end is the entrance. At the other end is the temple, and you don't know what's at those other ends. All right, does okay. she have any other weapons on her daggers? A dagger. All right, I grab the dagger and toss it to Gerard. It's like here you go. First. Yeah. <laughs> 
catch. I have no thiefly abilities. Can I just, but still, can I try to crack open the double door and look in without too much notice? There, I'm sure I have to make a roll, but yeah. Give me a PP is, check, baby. Is there a keyhole? Uh, is that a 10? I'm pretty sure I have a better than 10, but let me verify. Oh, I God, so. I made it by 11. I have a yeah. physical promise to 21. You certainly go and look in, and you see a room full of women all praying as like a priestess is leading a ceremony over them. And then beyond her are the doors that look more ornate and are probably, you figure, where the ritual's happening. I am fast. Am I that fast? Are you? Nice, yeah. You know what, YOLO? Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> so, I want to regroup for everybody watching <laughs> and for everyone here at the table. The plan is to open the door and try and run through the room full of priestesses, guards, and who else that are all praying, make it past them to the double doors, which you're going to throw open and hopefully charge in to save your friend with two daggers, a sword, and no armor. And I have none of those. Yes. And he has none of those things. Maybe yep, there's another that's the way plant. around. Maybe there's another way around. What? No, no, he said YOLO. He's committed to the plan. Oh. And you, by the way, I hate to break the news to you, smartass. You're the one who went, race you. So <laughs> Gerard was in for this plan too. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. What about Ishmatar, Bacht, and oh, Philip? Oh, Are they in for this plan? There's got to be another way. Well, I'm not asking you if there's another way. I'm asking you if you're joining these two on no. their manic cannonball run. No. <laughs> Ish. Philip's in. I don't. I don't think it's just my idea. Okay. You throw open the door. Boss, if you're not going, give somebody the sword. Well, no, you don't know if he's going. You haven't discussed this. You, you, he literally just went, I think I'm fast enough. And Jerry went, I'll race you. And they threw open the door, and they go running in. What's your I, IQ again, Devere? And then Philip's like, seven. Same, you know, same, same here. All right. In all such situations, we must go down to the die. You will use your PP, your speed. A 20 is a failure because it's a maximum you can roll, and this is a 20. So you want to roll 20 or less if you're, unless your speed is under 20. Okay. That's going to be to get to the doors on the far side. Eight. My speed is 24. Eight. 19, but my speed is 33. Oh, 30 in your game. Yeah. <laughs> I rolled a 17. What's your speed? My like, PP. No, speed. your speed. SPD. 13. So. <laughs> I was not fast enough, but I'm fat. Devere and Kirby bolt in. It's like a room full of chickens being disrupted. Like, oh, hey, oh, oh as all this chaos happens. Behind them, fat-ass Philip kind of chunders into the room as they're like, oh, and catches the attention of a few of them who start pulling daggers and swords and are looking at them. You two made it to the door. There are people coming towards you. Back in the hall, what are Navari and uh, Gerhard doing? Is it possible to sneak around? But sneak around closer? what? What is this around? You guys have this mentality like there's a big <laughs> circle you're in. What is this around? I told you, it's a cross section. So you want to run back the other way and sneak? Is that what you're trying no. to do? I need I need better than sneak around. Can I have a free action to say something? Can you wait until I get what the other players are doing, please? Yeah, I was Thank just you, boss. waiting. Navari, That's... what are you doing? Is, is it possible? Hold, Hold that thought. Okay. Hold that thought. Ish, what are you doing? No, I, I literally don't know what to do. Okay, so you waste an action standing there going, what the fuck did they just do? Fuck. Is it possible to take advantage of the commotion and sneak through? You can't sneak through a room full of aware people drawing weapons! <laughs> <coughs> Sneaking into the room, not an option. 
sneaking away from the room quickly, possibly an option if you want to do your sneaking. Yes. Gollum. <laughs> okay, Hungar, you wanted to say something while he. Go ahead, Hungar. I demand to speak to the man in charge. Oh. <laughs> All right. Oh, my gosh. Oh, oh. The beer. You're being attacked by women who are trying to grab you. Kirby, seven. Okay. Devere, 12. Uh, are we, so before I roll my dodge, I just want to know, am I at the door? The yes, opposite you're, side you're door? on the dais where the door is. Okay. My goal is just to see if it even opens, but yeah, I, will, I, I will definitely dodge. And, 15. Uh, well, I beat a seven no matter what, but... All right, so. so you guys duck underneath them. You get to the doors. They pull. They they push open. They're like double doors. You push them. The doors fly open. Laurelin, you are compromised. Would be a good word for it. You are you are vulnerable, perhaps in this moment in time, mm -hmm. as you sort of hear chaos. But the chanting and the gongs and the the, the scented. It's kind of been a bit overwhelming as an experience. And then the double doors burst open. Light floods into the room. You see Ethan and Devere standing there in their small clothes, with each with a dagger. No, no, I There's, have nothing. Oh, there, one with a dagger, one with nothing. There's chaos happening behind them. You can hear Philip yelling, I want to speak to the man in charge. What do you do, Laurelin? Um, yes, in flagrante delecto. Well, I'm going to energy bolt this bitch in the face. <laughs> they might make my escape, I guess, because there's enough chaos. And uh, okay. now that I know the guards can are just... I, guys, can I just get you to think for a second? You're outnumbered. Easily 10 to 1. Keep that thought in mind. Okay, so you're going to try and energy. Well, okay. First off, like, what? Where? Where is there to escape? So, like, there's no. no there, I'm saying, are like, windows? Escape. Are you going are to find your way out? Are... Is that your plan to fight versus a bunch of armed people with two daggers and a sword? That's your plan. All right. Okay. Let's think. I want to get a grasp of the situation. Yeah. So, is there windows in the room? There is a garden door set over there. So there's another door. Yeah, like it, it opens up into a private garden type thing. Okay. Um, by RPG right. Exile. I guess I'm going to get up naked and try to get out of her grasp because I'm okay. sure that's what I'm in right now. And then I'm going to try to break for the double doors and yell out the doors towards the Fane and Devere and all, all whatever's going on out there because I suspect the other ones are behind them. You would think. But nope, <laughs> you don't know that. But two of them are in the back. Of the uh, yeah, I don't know that. I'm just assuming because I see those two. Yep. Okay. So you're trying to get away from her. She, yeah. shocked and annoyed by all this, pulls the dagger out from underneath the pillow that she was probably going to sacrifice you with, and she's going to try and stab you. Everybody roll initiative. She gets the sick. Uh, total 20. Oh. Natural one. Excuse me. Fine. Nice. She's a naked lady. That's confusing. Women shouldn't be naked. Bocked. Wow. Navari. Give me one second, please. I apologize. Okay. Ungar. Philip, what'd you get? I got a two. And that's what my plus one. Laurelin. I got a 20. You guys wait. So you go first. Right? Yeah. What'd you get, Kirby? About 20. 20. So you're tied. Okay, so you're both going at the same time. What are you doing, Laurelin? She's just drew a dagger on you. You're going to just still try and get away from her? Well, if she's attacking me, I guess I'm going to energy bolt her in the face. Okay. <laughs> just checking what you're going to do. <laughs> well, I don't think... Does she get a save or something? Yeah, she does. It's a dodge of 18. Dodge of 18. Well, shut my mouth. With a 19, you energy bolt the pillow, causing feathers to explode into the room, making it even worse, because now there's feathers in the air. But she's going to try and stab you. She misses. She got a three. What are you doing, uh, Kirby? 
I do. I, I see the feather pillows explode and then yeah. the dagger go. go. I was already pretty much running. I know I opened the door. I had to slow down to open the door, but uh, I'm going to bolt towards her still, and I'm just basically going to dive on her to try to pin her down. <laughs> so as Laurelyn rolls away and tries to energy bolt her in the face as she swings with the dagger and misses from the top rope, Superfly Ethan Snooker <laughs> comes flying in with the, the, the macho man splash. All right, buddy, go for it. He said, I'm a magician, too. <laughs> Uh, 19 plus uh, 3, 22. So you, uh, let's see. Nice, no, you I'm got sorry, a 2 on the dodge as you land on her, knocking the air out of her. The dagger goes falling onto That's the floor at I your gold. feet, Orlin. She dropped the dagger, it landed at your feet as you're standing beside the bed. Meanwhile, back in the other room, Hungar, uh, Philip is surrounded by women with swords. I told you there were guards Let in this room. Ladies, there's enough of me for all of them. Uh, <laughs> hey, I'm making a good distraction. Bakht, what are you doing? Oh. Would you get Devere nine? Five. Five. Oh, you go before Bakht. Yeah. What are you doing, Devere? I'm going to run over to the high priestess, who is currently on the basically being pinned by Kirby. And press my dagger against her throat and make it obvious that anyone in the room makes an aggressive move towards any of my compatriots, I slit. So everything goes deadly calm for a second as everyone realizes he's got a dagger to their goddess. And she's like, get off me. No. Not you. She's looking at Ethan. <laughs> Peasant. Only if you promise not to hurt us. She glances down at the dagger, glances back at you. And Anybody here? It appears I... You notice she stopped referring to herself in the third person. I don't have much of a choice, do I? I look over... Oh, crap. Um, Odd even. Lock, uh, look over Laurelin. Like, what should I do? Get off of her! <laughs> Okay, so I, I start I, I, trying I, I, to cover my. Now I'm like trying to like take a sheet and like cover myself up. <laughs> Just completely annoyed. Okay, I, I get off of her. Okay, well, Devere, you've got her. You can pull her up as a hostage if you like. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So Devere pulls her up with the knife to her throat. And in the other room, they're all like, oh, oh. she's like, do whatever they say. We are compromised. We will extract our divine revenge later. Do not. Hurt them, let them go. As you're like, mm. she's like, start walking now. We require safe passage through your town. Stop talking. I will take you to your things and we will leave. Let's go. Let's go. And everybody, show the young kid your boobies. Phil, I did it. Did it for you, Kirby. Hold your tongue for just five seconds, please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so they're, all sort of like, they're all sort of like you know yeah, but she is their goddess as you're walking her out of the throne room out of the temple area you meet Vox and Navari in the hallway uh, on the way out I'm kind of whispering if I catch anybody's eyes or anything I'm like I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm sorry you see Esmeray come people. running across the room and she just gloms onto Ethan. They've got her painted up and with like a fucking feather, uh, not a feather, a flower crown and all this type of shit. And she's like, get me the hell out of here. Yes, we are leaving now. So she leads you down the corridor. You pass the unconscious captain on the floor. And she's like, this corridor, your weapons and gear are in the far room. Yes. Well, she's coming with us. You're, yeah, you're, you're coming with us, yes. So, take her down that corridor. And behind you, there are, like, guards coming. So, you guys are, like, you know, type of thing. And, you know, you've got, you got boxed and fucking Navari at the back with a dagger and a sword, keeping an eye on them. All your shit's in that room. Plus a lot of other shit. Nice. When you say a lot of other shit. Let's say you're not the first guest they've ever had here. All right. Hey, Sir Rusty, no, if there's better armor. 
Hold on, hold the on, hold agreement on. Was, the agreement was we get our own things back. They took us captive. They were going to kill our maid. We don't have time. We don't have to. We don't have time for Let's this. Get our shit and anything else that looks decent and get the hell out of here. Grab sir, whatever you need where you're leaving. No time for discussion. I start sir, taking off the sheet and strip sir. naked and start pulling on my my tunic and pants and <laughs> actually grabbing my fuck, fuck. You hold her now because Devere's going to take 10 days to get on his stuff. Bocked. You're muted. We can just carry it out. I want armor and a shield. As, as, as you're looking around, you see standing there against the wall a particularly lovely looking Zweehander. Take as it. you're looking at it, as you look at it, you feel the sword in your hand, and then you see your bastard sword, and you hear this dwarf voice in your head go, I don't know, that's a good sword. Wait a minute. So you remember that moment when you got the bastard yeah. sword. I'm sticking with the bastard sword. Okay. So while uh, Bacht and uh, Navari hold them at bay and then rotate out to, you know, get their stuff in, she's just like, okay, <clears throat> will you take me with you, please? Why? Because she asked nicely. Nice. You hate it here? You hate this place. I can't even begin to explain to you how much I hate this place. Have you ever been in a place with nothing but women? Well, I want to. No. <laughs> it's quite exhausting. Yes, I we'll take you with us. Excellent. As long as you escort us out of here. Would you mind if I put on some clothes? Go ahead. No, please, by all means. So she rummages through and finds, like, you know, a leather jacket and stuff like that. Is Meanwhile, any of, yeah, I want to ask her if any of this stuff has any special prop. She's, like, getting dressed. She's like, I don't know. I'm not I an antiquitarian. They take cast it from them, then they capture it, then they make me have sex with the men, hoping I'll have a baby for them. Cast magic. Detect magic. Laura. Can we just go? We don't we gotta have to wait time. until we gotta we wait have. until everybody gets dressed. We have a few seconds. It don't take long for you to cast spells. Everything will glow. We're all in a small room. Does it glow? He knows no. what's magic. We're not wasting yeah. time with that. Yeah. We're leaving. We have time. It's gonna take the knights time to get dressed. It's gonna take you time to get dressed. We have the time. Well, That's what I'm saying. Okay. I I, I just sigh. I cast sense magic, but I only take as long as it takes for her to get dressed. I'm not like, I'm not, we're not spending a lot of time here. So I take as much time as it takes for her to put clothes on and I walk around and see if my senses go off. Okay. Uh, it's not D&D, &D, guys. Let me just leave it at that. Yeah. It's not a room full of magic treasure. It's yeah. shit they took off guys who came through. Mm -hmm. But there's a small chance. There's always a chance. No, there isn't. This is not okay. a high magic world, Hungar. <laughs> but I know that as a player, but my character does not know that. Your character has never seen magic before he met Laurelin. So everything's magical now. <laughs> can't fight I know logic. that it's out there. Oh my god, you can't fight this logic, I swear. This is, like Im this is immutable logic. <laughs> One magic thing exists, therefore everything's magic. <laughs> That's that theme logic. Not <laughs> you do find your uh, vials. I take them. Yeah, That's my squire growing actually is your vials. My squire. Oh, suddenly we remembered we have a squire, do we? Somewhere in the building, sitting in a room, eating cake, kicking his legs on a bed, is a little <laughs> boy going. <laughs> <laughs> we, will, we will fetch him before we leave she just looks at you she's like can't you just get another one no <sighs> he was provided to me by I the lady Shulane as, as Mary's like I know where he is I will go I will get him does she what? have it because I wanted to ask Esmeray if she got everything that's hers I, I have nothing Buck come with me yeah 
I'm gonna so go you with guys that. sort of head down towards them. They're like, mmm. she's like, allow them to go. We have allowed them passage out the door. So they make a hole. She takes you to a room and you open the door and there's poor little Perrin sitting there and he's eating cake and he's like, oh, hello. <laughs> Come on. Uh, we go. <laughs> but I still have cake. Bring it, along. <laughs> bring it with you. Come on. Okay, I bring the cake. <laughs> Adding along with cake. Where is Chevalier de Verre? He's with us. We'll oh, take you to him. Good, good, good. I was unable to keep his horse safe. I feel bad now because I was a bad squire. Because if you cannot it's keep okay. the horse safe, you're a bad squire. And I feel bad about it's this. Okay. It's okay. Are you sure it's okay? He's going to yell and be very mad. I don't think he'll be mad. He'll understand. Okay. So you get back to where everybody is. And she's like, here's going to be the hard part. Once they realize I'm leaving, I will have no more power. We don't let them know you're leaving. We just tell them that we're taking you a certain amount of distance outside of the gate. And if we see anybody walking out of the gate, we're going to kill you. So that way they will stay in the town and then we just haul out. Counter proposal because they don't really like when men talk endlessly at them. How about we just haul ass? Okay. They won't I chase us into the woods if the moon's up. I agree with this plan. We we gotta go. Yeah. All right. You can step back out into the corridor. There is a door behind you that leads to the outside. She's like, we give them free passage. Go, 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 go. Jelly. Let's go. Everyone yep. give me a running doesn't have a percentage attached to it. Athletics doesn't have it attached to it. So we're going to go with a uh, Jesu Christi makes the ganglia twitch. Times your speed by five and roll under that on a percentile, please. I win. Okay. You can fail on a double O. <laughs> Ten. Um, I'm wow. Okay. You fail, Bok? No. It's going to be hard for me to fail. Now you can fail on a done double O. That's the only way I'm going to fail. That's fine. 31. Hungar? 17. Okay. Severe? 75. I had to roll um, anything under 120, so double O would have been my only fail. Okay. Same for you, Lachlan? Yeah, yeah roll All right. You guys burst open the door as the air of the night hits you. You start running. And then you hear the cry go up behind as they start to realize they've been duped. Who's got the slowest speed of the lot of you? 20. I, 15. I have a 13. Okay. So as you're running, Perrin, Lockwald, and Philip are the stragglers on this one. You have a choice. The party can move at the speed of the slowest person, or you can move fast and let them fend for themselves. What are you choosing to do? I'm As, protecting Perrin. I'm not. I'm going to stay back with him. I'm Here. moving. I'm moving past. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I know. We know what Kirby's doing. Kirby's running for his life. We know. No, no, no. I'm moving past because I'm going to pull out my bow and stay at oh, range. Okay, good man. Javier, are you holding back or are you charging forward? You're holding, holding back. back for Perrin. Ishmatar. Navari. Okay, so you guys hang back, but because Ethan is giving you cover with his bow, uh, he manages to push them back a little bit and give you a little bit of time. You do have to keep up with the fat man, which is hard to do, but you get there. You get to the northern gate of this town, which basically she's yelling, open the gates, we command it! And the woman guard who's there has no idea what the fuck's going on, so the goddess just told them to open the gate. Throws open the gate as you hear the captain who's been retrieved yelling, close the gate, close the gate, as basically you guys charge out into the night. You don't stop running for about five minutes, ten minutes. You're on the salt road, which continues beyond this town a little bit, and eventually you get to the part of it where it drops away into garbage again, and you are in the woods. You stop, I would assume. You're not yeah. going to charge blindly into the woods at night. She's like, they won't go, they won't come, they, they, they won't come. And as she says that, you hear the howls in the distance. 
And we'll be picking this up next month. Oh, for fuck's sake. I hate this place. <laughs> <laughs> I hate the fight. Savage. Savage. All right. Send me your votes for MVP, please, and thank you. Oh. Apologies for that bear. My father needed me for something. My real life father. <laughs> That's okay. I guess I should open Discord, huh? Yeah. yeah. Right. Same here. Same here. I might help. Hold on. Apologies for interrupting the narration in the beginning of That's the That's okay. It was a momentary thing, and I had to bark like you do to assert dominance, and then dominance was asserted, and we were good. Dad charisma. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to eat something right in front of you. I'm voting for myself. Okay, <laughs> you do what you got to do. Who am I waiting for for a vote still? Ah, there it is, the last vote. Just All right, mine. Start, yeah, sorry. Let's start with Cody. Who'd you vote for and why? I voted for Legion of Myth. I voted for Kirby. Which uh, I will say, you know, everybody did a good job, and I think... I would have voted for Devere, but I've already voted for Devere once. I think I voted for him twice, maybe. So I'm going <laughs> to give it to Kirby this time. But like, I, I honorable mention for uh, Sir Devere because he's just so into that character; it's ridiculous, and I'm loving it. But Kirby too, like he's playing that character to the hilt. And it's both of them are like everybody's great, you know. He, he's so into that character to the detriment of the fucking party. You know what yeah. I mean? It's yeah, yeah, and, uh, It's great. All right, what was your favorite moment? Um, favorite moment was probably, uh, I don't know. There were a lot of good moments in this one. Probably, uh, them running across the, just being fucking morons and just bursting into the room and running across the room. <laughs> like no plan, no, nothing. Just, but you saw all the pieces I was giving them, right? Like you saw that, like you can take the captain prisoner, you can walk her yeah, in, yeah. you can do all these things. <laughs> they're like, nope, 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 nope. Let's beat her up instead. I love that. Okay, fair enough. Max Liao, who'd you vote for? I, I voted for Cody. Um, th the main reason was because, again, I agree with what he said. Uh, Devere was great. Actually, all the characters were great, as always. Um, the main difference was is that uh, Laurelin was put in a Bit of a different situation, and it was good to see uh, the personality. I don't want to say evolve, but the personality expressed. Devere, while great, it's still Devere. So basically, Laurelin gave something new, is I guess what I'm so saying. You saw some growth. Okay, that's fair. I don't know if it was growth yet. It might be too soon for that. But yeah, I mean, but okay. it's definitely like there's there's some some difference there. Yeah, a hint of something. To yeah. Uh, All right. Like when he's just like, you know what? You figured out the you know, stuff like that, or you know, trying to herd the cat. So, uh, okay. Uh, on favorite moment, uh, honestly, was the was the pool thing because I, even as me as the player, I'm like, shut up! This is a dump. This place right here, it's just waterfall. It's just pool. And he's not going to kill us yet. <laughs> that, that, that happened. <laughs> it's this whole thing I've been telling you, you're going into a scheme. You're, I've been saying this over and over again in this desperate point to get you to understand how fucking dangerous this place is. I think you got the message, man. I'm really happy. No, I have an no. int of seven. That's a good point. Yeah, oh, yeah. You you two there are the fucking brain trust into you. I mean, that's where to go. All right, fair. Mr. DeVere, who did you vote for? As I put in my message to you, I voted for Cody for putting up with my shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's worthy. <laughs> Yeah, that's a fair cop. And what was your favorite moment? I think um, um, when Navri put me in my place. Ooh. <laughs> oh. Just that one comment. Just one comment just put me in my place, yes. All right. Good call. Mr. Malachi, who'd you vote for and why? I vote for Geek. I just think that you know he played his character perfectly tonight. Vote for who? Geek? Geek. John. Uh, Devere, Devere. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, the, okay. oh, God, okay. <laughs> and what was your favorite moment? Oh, I'm going to have to go with this guy over here putting John in his place. <laughs> with that comment. 
All right. Fair enough. Yeah, I know. <laughs> At least I'm a real knight. I was pretty brutal. Yeah. All I right. Buy mine. Yeah. Iman, who did you vote for and why? Sorry, my connection died. Were you asking me? Yeah, who do you vote for and why? I voted for Sir Gerard simply for his willingness to stick to his principles, regardless of how wrong they might be. Yeah. Well, he, he came close to getting you guys killed, so yeah. <laughs> well done there. What was your favorite moment? Oh, my favorite moment was the argument with me and Sir Gerard. I feel like that was uh, that was uh, definitely the highlight of the session for me. <laughs> okay, fair enough. And last but not least, Hunger, who'd you vote for and why? I voted for Kirby. Okay. Um, just everything that he did. I mean, my favorite moment was when he had the breakdown. I don't even want to be here. Why am I here? This place sucks. I want to go oh, home. God. Screw you guys. Uh, it's just, and you know, he's his character's out here. He doesn't know why he's here. And he's just going with the flow. And it's just like, he seems innocent. But I know deep down, he's really not. He did tackle a naked <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the Snooka Superfly press onto the naked lady was pretty impressive shit. Yeah, it was. And your favorite moment was him having his breakdown. Was that it? Oh, his, him having his breakdown. That was great. I mean, it's like, out of all the, I mean, the whole game was fantastic but everybody did a really good job on role playing but it just seems like every time that we play this game you see max super into his character and his character growing each session and you know i i really appreciate that my second favorite moment was when i asked for to speak to the manager in the Amazon village. Speak to the manager. Yeah. We're going to name that you Karen horrible. now instead of Philip. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that means we have a tie. Two for Devere, two for Max. So you both win, which is nice. Um, because Max which, which, voted for you, Cody. Uh, so basically that's a tie vote. So you both, you both basically get it. So you'll both get one free reroll next session each, which is going to be on April 13th, barring schedule issues. And welcome to level two. Level up your characters before the next game, please. <coughs> okay. Now, what, what I'm going to say entail? something about tonight's session, which is uh -oh. I absolutely love how the previous two sessions, session zero, session one, oh, this is the third session, the previous three yeah. sessions where you guys were out in the civilized world and you knew what everything was, you were perfectly in command, your characters were in charge of yourselves, you did everything good. I took you into the crazy, evil, dangerous world, and you degenerated into chaos. <laughs> Lord of the Flies. It was Lord of the Flies, baby. Insane. And then my my favorite moment was, you're about to die. I've tried to explain to you how you're going to die. Mm -hmm. Don't take the hint, except for Hungar, who's like, I want to go back to the town. I want to go back to the town. I want to go back to the town. Fuck this. I want to go to the town. And Ethan, who's like, we should go to the town. Everybody else is like, no, we're going to follow Devere, and we're going to go around the town because those evil bitches and all that stuff. And I you're mean. about to die. And literally, Cody or, or Laurelin goes petty, protects himself, and goes, "What are we doing to here?" <laughs> that, that was great. That, that, that was actually was one of the things I really, really liked because uh, Laurelin, for just a moment, uh, pardon me for saying it this way, but basically became the petulant child. Yeah. It's like, screw you guys! Yeah. If you're gonna be a bunch of douche nozzles, figured I, I actually liked that. I was like, I loved you know, it. yeah, that was great. That was that was. I guess protection over myself. So what are you going to do there, Devere? You're the leader now, well, Devere. I so wanted to follow Philip back to town, but I was like, after, basically, after already upsetting the status quo enough today, I was like, I don't want to, but I'll stay here, I guess. I'm really curious after this shit show of events if Ethan's going to listen to anything Devere says anymore. Like, you know, like, I don't know, what kind of peasant am I? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, I had a good time. 
I, I enjoyed that. That was fun. Yeah, it was chaos, chaos, but fun. Yeah. Uh, everybody who watched, thank you all so much uh, for uh, watching. We really appreciated it. It was fun. Thanks for the super chats and the rerolls and all that crazy stuff. If you for some we reason, we needed them. <laughs> if you are for some reason watching this on the replay, please tell us down below or if you're after we're done who your favorite, uh, what your favorite one was, who your MVP was, and all that kind of stuff. Um, I guess we're done. It's late, and we got to let the, the people in the UK go to bed. So thank you all. Everybody, <laughs> say your goodbyes, and everyone else, peace, love, and geek. Chisel. Goodbye, everyone. Thank, thank you. you very much. Yeah, Have a great one. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for putting up with our chaos. <laughs>